Welcome to Lorehammer, Episode 11, Tau, The Greater Good. Hello, and welcome back to Lorehammer. My name is Eric. This is Jordan. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa. Did you just what? bump me from second host to third host? <laughs> Mark, you're, you've lost your place. <laughs> Good sir, what did I do to offend you? Everything. Oh. Yeah, oh. I didn't expect that one. Well, I'm just trying to change it up. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> like, Jordan, you have a very... You're you're at my side here. Oh, it has nothing uh, to do with the fact that he's easily accessible for my touches. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, all right. You know what? Let's just. My name is Eric. I don't like this order okay, anymore. Well, I'm, I who do you I, want I, me to introduce first? Screw it. Guest first. Okay, fine. Be be courteous. Right. Of course. They're the honorable person. Okay. Uh, welcome back, Rio. Thank you. Yeah, it's good. It's good to be back. Of course it is. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? Because you're always fondling everyone's legs. <laughs> it's awkward. They like Literally. it. That's the number one piece of feedback I get from people. They're like, I really felt connected <laughs> when you sensually touched my leg. Rio's knows his is coming. Yeah, yeah you Let's know. do some like ASMR. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. just start chewing into the mic. <laughs> yeah, Mark, different different strokes for different folks, yeah. as I always say. <laughs> yeah, because Jordan likes it up and down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You like it side to no, side. I don't like Rio it likes circular uh, motion. <laughs> I know all your different strokes. <laughs> Why don't you focus on your own body? For I'm a just bit. trying to keep everyone. In the greater good. Mm. <laughs> Together for the greater good, guys. Yes. Mm. Uh, which, coincidentally, <laughs> is our topic for the day. Wow. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, let's talk about a couple things. A, Rio, last time you were in, we asked you a couple questions. Just kind of like, I don't know, hear your voice. Get uh, to know him. Yeah, exactly. Through those four questions, you're able to delve right into Rio's identity as a mm -hmm, person, mm -hmm. <laughs> really understand who he is on a deeper level. It, uh, hmm. Were our <laughs> questions that good, or is he just that, like, shallow? shallow? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think the questions were really good. Let's not... <laughs> Mark, that, that would be rude. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, now we only have one question for you today, Rio. Um, it's, why haven't we started a 40k RPG yet? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? Why are you asking me? Because you said you would join us. Yeah, I'd join you. I wouldn't. I'm not starting it. I've been sitting in my garage waiting. for the past three weeks, just waiting for people to come into my garage <laughs> and play a 40k RPG with me. Nobody showed up. Mark, you have to tell people you're there. Where else would I be? <laughs> in my house with the wife. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> why? Wait. Why haven't we started one though? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think we just haven't really settled on a GM. That's probably the number one thing. We have the people. Yeah. We definitely have the people. Yeah. It's just choosing someone for the players to rip apart. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> I saw this one funny <laughs> funny picture, and it was, um, uh, it was like, I keep trying to make, the caption was, I keep trying to make uh, fun and interesting and, like, powerful evil characters for my... Um, <clears throat> my players to fight against this is like from yeah. the GM's perspective. Yeah. And then the bottom picture was, um, but they'll never be as destructive as themselves. <laughs> like they are their own worst enemy, yeah. which is oh, so absolutely. true. Yeah. No one can make as devastating choices as you can. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Same goes for real life. Absolutely. Much, yeah. As much as I would like to destroy you, Jordan, no one is as good as that as you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> and with that truth bomb, good night. <laughs> um, no. Well, uh, since our um, episode nine, and that was the one where we had our little contest that we put out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we actually had a, a response back within hours of release. Yeah. Yeah. It wow. was pretty quick. It was. It, it was cool. Though. Our devoted fans. I know. Right? <laughs> I really think that that uh, the gift card was an incentive. <laughs> It was like, well, screw it. I can win this. What? They did it for money? <laughs> I thought yeah. they did it purely for passion. 
No, okay. no one is as destructive as themselves. Yeah. It's greed. <laughs> it's the only reason people are willing to participate with us. Yeah. Uh, but it was uh, Lee Marrow who won. Congratulations! Yeah, it was the first. It w- he was the first guy. Good job, wasn't Lee. He? Yeah, he, he was the first one to, to respond to us, and he was right. Yeah, and then we had a we couple got a more. yeah a couple other ones that yeah. were mm. not correct, and I was disappointed in their knowledge. <laughs> I, I had no idea what them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I had no idea. <laughs> uh, but it's okay because Mark is going to explain what it is. Um, so it's a Space Marine librarian rank called the epistolary and there's different ranks in the librarium there's like codicier uh lexicanum and then epistolary and then chief librarian um but yeah it's just like the symbol of rank and librarians and space marine chapters are like the main thing is they're psychers but the other thing is they're like guardians of like the chapter's lore and you know they run the librarium which is a library essentially of knowledge so that's kind of why we chose that symbol yeah, because like they're responsible for like chronicling the chapter and yeah, so that's what we're doing. Yeah, the entire universe. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, knowledge uh, drop. <laughs> uh, if anyone ever wants to like verify it, they if you look at like any uh, Space Marine librarian on their tabard, they will have like their rank on it. So a lot of the more powerful ones will have the symbol on it. So. Yeah, it's just like one of those. So that's basically free advertising for a podcast, is kind of how. <laughs> right. Every time you see a librarian, think of Lorehammer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like. I just there's so many things that like I see a model and I just assume it's part of the pageantry, or just part of the decoration, but it actually has like a meaning yeah. behind it that I just don't know. <laughs> Which is whatever. Uh, at some point, I'll learn it all, or I won't. Who Probably cares? not. <laughs> you can always just ask Mark. Right, exactly. Um. <laughs> That's just take a picture of it and be like, Mark, what's this? I find though, um, the more I'm more I'm doing it, like, and the more uh, Games Workshop advances the plot, the more I'm like, oh yeah, this is what happens. And then like we go read Let's Academy, it's like, oh, they drastically changed that. Like, well, I think it's probably because you you would have read the Lexicanum a long time ago. Oh yeah, like or like I haven't bought like codexes since like fourth and fifth edition. Right, and um, and things change pretty drastically. Yeah, so. But, so if you never bother reading the cut, or yeah. you read the old ones, yeah, yeah, and, and then never read the new and, updated yeah. versions or whatever. But there's often quite quite a lot of mistakes where I'm like, oh, yeah. that was <laughs> well because they are willing to change the lore. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, an update on our picture contest. Number one, uh, haven't received any submissions. Slightly disappointed in you guys if you all could step up to the plate. <laughs> I've been be told, nice. though, that it takes a long time to make a simple picture. You know what? I'm not a computer guy. Like, it I'm doesn't not. even have to be on the computer. Can't you just draw a cool picture and then a take a picture bang of it with your phone? <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, like, I don't know. Like, Mark, if it was that easy, why are you doing it? Because I can't draw. Well, neither can I. Yeah. Well, that's why we're Nor not doing it. I. But, like, yeah, I don't know. I can Get draw. on it, people. I want a new logo. Yeah. And by what Mark meant to say is <laughs> we uh, implore the public. Demand. Or demand. <laughs> I, I don't know, I guess. Um, but yeah, send your submission to us. We did. I did add a due date of January first. Yeah, on there. And uh, if you're looking for like ideas or like kind of wanting to kind of feel like what we want, um, one of the ideas we were throwing around, which would be cool, is if you got like an old faded looking book and wrote Lorehammer on the cover and made it look like like an old weathered book, and then you put it on like a stone floor in the back, and it's just like, <laughs> just like. <laughs> gothic looking like an old book on a floor like that's tattered and maybe a corner's burnt up or whatever can we For, can we turn it into like uh, a gif where the book like opens up and then there's pictures of us <laughs> on the inside i was th- i was thinking that like uh we would write all our episode notes into the book and then eventually give it away at some point if we like that'd be kind of cool actually. that could be kind of cool. right if we ended up going that route and actually buying a book this, and this is this. the first i'm hearing of this well, I don't tell Mark. you everything as soon as I see you. That's not true. <laughs> no, unless it involves crude. I don't tell you everything I, as soon as I see He's you. He's a bird, Mark. I'm a crude guy now. Yeah, Mark. Screw Lord of the Rings. I'm a crude guy. <laughs> Mark has, in the past couple of weeks, really turned up the heat on his crude. Well, yeah, I've always liked crude. And ever since, like, uh, our conversation with Rio last time about RPG, yeah. and then, like, oh, yeah, I'd definitely be a crude in it. And I'm like, ooh, crude. And then, yeah, you look at one picture, and then four hours goes by, and you're you know and you've bought a box set yeah, <laughs> you a box set and 
you don't even know what happened in those four hours. You just know there's now crute in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, that's odd. <laughs> How did that get there? The wife starts going, uh, Mark? And you're like, it's, it wasn't me. I don't... It couldn't have been me. Yeah. I've been here the whole time. I slowly close the door. <laughs> Box delivery for Mark. <laughs> Pretty soon Amazon is just going to start, like, you buy something from a store and they'll just deliver it to your door. You won't even have to leave the garage. You'll Perfect. just get Warhammer delivered to you. Ooh. Drones will just come drop off. Your- yes. Oh, no, but the I want drones boxes. are sweet. I want human contact, though. <laughs> they Please come in and play with me. They don't want to contact you. <laughs> I got all things that are good in here. <laughs> all Warhammer that is good. <laughs> um, okay, a quick change to, or not a change, just an adding to our Eldar episode. Yeah, well, when I was listening to it, I forget exactly. I think it was like when we were talking about the Eldar fleeing the galaxy mm-hmm. and like, oh, that's not feasible. Like, you know, the time and stuff, but like Eldar are immortal. And there's a couple times in the episode where, like, it made it almost sound like we were saying they weren't immortal, but Eldar are essentially immortal beings. Yeah, like, age doesn't touch them. Yeah, so, like, to travel the galaxy, they're immortal. Their ships are, like, you know, they self sufficient. Self sufficient. So, like, they could do it. So, yeah, that's all. Um, yeah. The distinction being that the Dark Eldar are kind of not immortal. Yeah, just because they have the whole soul sl- soul sucking of slanish happening. That's a lot of s's. I know <laughs> the soul sucking of slanish. Say it five times fast now. <laughs> I don't want to. No, don't even try. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself like that. And then uh, I guess the only other thing before we jump into our main topic is Uh-oh, this is off script. I know. Can you guess what it's going to be? I have no idea. <laughs> I can't even be kidding. Are you nervous? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> no, just a shout it could, out. It could be a couple things. No, just a shout out to uh, a guy I met, <laughs> uh, Jason James or James Jason. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we were talking on like our Lorehammer like, page or whatever, and uh, it was just me and him talking. And then every time I'd see Eric, he'd jump into like our conversation to me in like real life and be like, haha, that was funny what you guys said. You guys are best friends now. Like, okay, you're like, making it sound like I'm a creep. <laughs> no, you are creeping. You were creeping mine and his personal conversations, reading it without it's our not permission. It's personal when what? you put it on the Lorehammer page. <laughs> yeah, if you're talking to them, like we all have access to that page. <laughs> How, like, what do you think I, like, I literally get buzzes at so, two or three yeah, in the morning. I'm, I'm so getting that, all that's those. Like, oh, Mark is responsible back and I'm like what the hell are they talking about now like yeah. it's three in the morning so what are you saying I should just give out my personal phone number to everybody yes! I, think, I think Eric's just a little bit jealous I, I think, think so too I'm not jealous I'm just scared that I'm being supplanted <laughs> you're just protective I Mark just is a protective. fragile person <laughs> <laughs> the world out there will ravage him <laughs> yeah. he actually seems like a pretty cool guy yeah he's a cool guy um, he gave me a tip too um, what's that he told me to uh, how to degloss stuff. Oh, uh, degloss a model because I just painted a crew and he was super shiny and I hated it. And he told me how to degloss it. Good guy over here. <laughs> like, sure, I could have just googled it and yeah. would have got the exact same answer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you know, it's the thought. It's different when it comes from someone who, because you know, they who, who deeply cares about right, my exactly. emotional <laughs> and my model's well-being. Well, at least you've met one person <laughs> who does that. <laughs> yeah, I care about your your well-being. Your models, on the other hand. Not so much, eh? No. Is that why you're always kill, trying to kill them in 40k? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, I, the, the whole purpose of it is me trying to kill hate them. Hate crimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a hate crime, it's just genocide. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah. Remember when we were playing a tabletop game one time um, with somebody, and he just, I think he was super upset, and he took his fist, oh, yes. and he just destroyed, like, <laughs> a squad of models. Like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Micah? That's what we're <laughs> yeah, talking about? Yeah yeah, 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 no, he slammed his hand <laughs> on the table and destroyed the model that Mark had made for him. Yeah, the, the worst part about it, too, is uh, it wasn't like it was a space marine where it's like, you know what, I have a thousand shoulder pads, no big deal. Sure, like sure. I can glue that arm back on. He broke uh, Eldar Howling Banshees, which are Citadel fine casts, so they're super fragile to begin with. You can't fix them, and they were shattered. Like, <laughs> yeah, they were they were obliterated. <laughs> yeah, like, like I love seeing his face right after he had done it. Yeah, because it, it was it was not like he intentionally smashed the models. So let's make he that just clear. He put his fist down. Yeah, he was upset. He put his fist down. Or, yeah. You know, just being dramatic. But 
Oh man, yeah, he like looked up. Oh, so that was a hate crime. Yes, no, absolutely. <laughs> like, you think you can just indiscriminately destroy these plastic models? <clears throat> Uh, now we're going to talk about the race that is the least hateful <laughs> ah. in all the galaxy. I thought we've already done humanity a bunch of times. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> aren't, they, aren't they the most? <laughs> <laughs> the most prejudiced? Yeah, I, I think they are. Uh, they, they definitely are. You now, know, I, now I, make I, note I, of that. I, I want to disagree with, with uh, your okay. analysis. I think the Tyranids are the least hateful. That's true. They're just hungry. Yeah, like, they, they're not motivated by, like, any sort of... Uh, dreams of like racial dominance they're just yeah and totally totally driven by instinct yeah and it's not like they go to a planet and <laughs> enslave all the people yeah, and yeah. Like, torture them and stuff yeah. they're just eating the planet yeah. like they, <laughs> maybe not hateful okay which is why um, they should rule the galaxy <laughs> <laughs> and at some point they're gonna yeah yeah <laughs> if anything uh, the only the i i can see the necron standing up because the like do do the tyranids kill something if it has no potential biomass like would um, they fight would they can like conceivably wage war on the necron like directly no but like the nids want the the biomass on the planet that the necron are on yeah and if the necron get in the way they're gonna fight the necron to get so, the biomass so it's not like they're like actively fighting the necron it's gotcha. just the necron have to happen to be in their way yeah but like if if the necron try to leave the planet yeah do you think the Nids would, like, go out of their way to stop them? No, I don't think they would. But they would stop, like, humans or something else because yeah, yeah. they want that. Yeah. But, like, so living metal, I wonder if that has any oh. type of... Like, probably not because it's probably all, like, nanobites or whatever. Um, nanobites, is that what they Yeah. No, what are they called? It, 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 yeah. yeah, nanobites. Yeah. Isn't it, like, an... Nanobots. Is it called the... Ne- nanobots, not bites. Yeah, necrodermis nanobots. Necrodermis or something? Living metal, necrodermis. Yeah, so who knows? Maybe that does have a... A Some partly, kind of living organism in it. Yeah, that, partly that, organic. That sounds difficult to digest. <laughs> it does. Not, not when you hear how the nids actually digest stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. It's disgustingly cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in our Tyranid episode, maybe. Yeah, yeah that's we'll in uh, that's in two episodes from now. Yeah, oh. I think two. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, because we're doing this one, and then we're doing uh, Necron. Yeah. And then Tyranid. Yeah. So the next two episodes, like, I'm actually pretty stoked for. <laughs> Yeah, that should be sweet. good. Should be good. Yeah, but back to the matter. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> rabbit trails, right? <laughs> Upon rabbit trails, um, <clears throat> let's dive right in to Tau. Oh boy, Tau. Uh, I guess let's talk about first contact. Yeah. Um, so they were first contacted by the Imperium. Like this isn't when they're first made. This is just the first known history of them. So they could have been around for billions of years to Tau. But this is the first known contact by the Imperium. And it was an M35. Like, late M35, I think, like, 700. Yeah, 790-something. Whatever. And uh, it was just, like, a Mechanicum Explorer ship, I believe, that landed on the planet, on Tau Planet. Planet's called Tau. Yep. Yeah. It's like having a planet called Humanity. Human. (laughs) Human. (laughs) You know, it's kind of... But, yeah, so the planet's called Tau. They land on that planet... And they see basically just, like, simple uh, cave plains dwellers. Like, there's nothing notable about them at all. Yeah, they're like, just nomad they, tribes. Yeah, like, they, they're not organized. They don't have weapons. Well, they'd have, like, basic spears, like stone spears and stuff. But, like, there's nothing of note about them. So the Mechanicum log it, and they uh, return back to a Forge World, I would assume. No, I think they, it's, I think they were going to actually yes. wipe them out. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, it's whether or not, like, that ship actually had the capability to do it, or if they're just, like, they log the planet as, like, they mark it, right? And, like, okay, yeah. now well, a, real, it, I, a real expeditionary force is going to come. I think it was and, a warp storm, actually, that prevented Well, it was yeah. at the yeah. end. Yeah. So the, the, the ship leaves the planet, and then by the time they send another fleet to go assimilate the planet uh, I see, or whatever, I see. they find the warp storm, and yeah. the planet's been cut off. So over the thousands of years, the warp storm's happening... And uh, the Mechanicum, like, just forgets about the planet completely. Yeah. Because there was they nothing have other notable. Yeah, and like, things to take care of. So it's just, like, it gets lost. Like, there's billions of things to do, right? Yeah, so. exactly. And it's not like, holy cow, this, like, these aliens are shooting, like, crazy things. or you Yeah, know, they're, they're not just, a threat. They're nothing. They're just, and the, by, the, by the sounds of the planet, too, it's just like a giant desert 
world uh no there's still rivers and yeah 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 but like I think it looks primarily deserty to me like oh, okay. and even the way like their uh biology is and stuff like it's like very like um made for like being in a desert hmm. so like sure like it's not like star wars where every planet you got tattooing that's your desert right world. it's like, only yeah like desert like planets do have poles and yeah, different things geographical and, yeah, things but yeah. I'd say it's primarily desert. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Sure. And uh, I'm not going to say any more about it, so. Good. Great. <laughs> Good. Maybe this is why I'm host number three now. <laughs> it's because you smell bad. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I showered last week. <laughs> Mark, no. Um, so that's uh, how humanity first found out about the Tau. Yeah. And that's how they view them for thousands of years, right? It's logged, yeah. it's ignored. Yeah. So then we're going to jump into, like, from the Talos point of view. Yeah. So you get, like, from the time uh, humanity first contacted them, that's when our, like, the Tau history kind of starts for us. And then that warp storm happens, and they have around 6,000 years to develop before anything kind of crazy comes their way. And um, this race, at this point, they kind of, they break off into different, I would say, like, no, like the tribes. Like, yeah. if they're all nomads, and you have, like, a tribe that you're with. Like, some tribes go up the mountains, and they... Yeah, everyone's mm-hmm. trying to find their own unique place in the world. Yeah. So they go to different areas and start doing different things. Right. And then, but because of how quickly, like, the Tao evolve and enhance, like, their bodies start actually changing to adapt to the environment that they're around. Yeah. So the mountain guys, like, this is the coolest one to me. They start actually developing wings. No, no, yeah. no, no. No, they do not, yeah, Pip, I read sir. It, I read it twice. No, yeah. they do not develop wings. All right, I will find <laughs> that while Mark... <laughs> Have you ever seen a Tau with wings? I actually read it in the Codex. There's no way they that developed the wings. The Aircast lost their wings when they started becoming spacefaring. Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe that's something new. Back to the whole, I read codexes a long time ago, not yeah. so much now. Like, I did read the codex this morning. Because back in the day, it was always they would make, like, uh, air gliders and stuff. Not, like, actual physical wings. I, I thought I saw that on the Lexicanum as well. You could be right, but probably not. Okay. Well, but you, maybe. you keep talking, and I'll see if I can find it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fact check. But either way, someone their, has to. Their their bodies became more elongated and like lighter and like made for flying from mountaintop to mountaintop essentially. And uh, hmm. whether they did this through actual wings or hang gliders, we'll get back to you on that. You know that, that is interesting. And just a side note, because uh, I've I've read that like people speculate that if. Uh, it's interesting that they involve like the your change of like environment will actually change your physiology because yeah. that's actually really well, that's re- adaptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but people like conjecture that like if we were to ever humans nowadays were ever to live on Mars, yeah, that we would actually grow a lot taller because the gravity is so much lighter, right? Like yeah, okay. over time, if we actually had a colony on Mars, and people's limbs would be a lot more long. Yeah, your bone density would yeah, be as yeah, exactly, thick and, right. Yeah. So it is right here, Mark says in the codex um their bodies have evolved to the new circumstances no longer bearing wings as they once did but instead exhibiting longer and lighter frames in response to their low gravity existence that is crazy yeah like they're gonna really have to changed. do some more <laughs> i mean it's in the codex maybe it's a figure of speech and in the, le- in the <laughs> yeah. lexicanum they describe it as skin flaps yeah. That's crazy. Sure. Okay. But like, so when what I was, do you have other than the codex? So to when go I was off thinking on? like wings, I was thinking like actual bird wings, but like they could be talking more like, like a maybe like a, between squ- a, yeah, like a yeah. squirrel suit. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Yes, yeah. but like because that I could believe. But to, for them to have two arms, two legs, and then grow a pair of wings on top of that, that seems like absurd angel to me. wings. Almost. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. that seems too much. But I could. I mean, you never know. A yeah. and B, like the only source of lore that you have is the codex. So, and books. Yes, but, but I don't know if the books talk a lot about, like, their no. history. I thought no. it was more like the spheres. Yeah, but yeah. anywho. Sure, sure. I concede that uh, Games Workshop has messed up on that <laughs> piece of their lore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a mistake, clearly. <laughs> um, don't worry, Mark. They'll fix it in the next edition. Oh, I know. Yeah. They're listening. They know. <laughs> they know. They know what they've done. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, but they're they're... The main thing is that they developed differently. Yeah. And they were tailored to their environments, which 
changed what they were capable of doing. Like yeah. these, the the air guys who had like really light bones and like they were no good at like physically fighting. Like you just it you can't like you can't pack a punch when your bones yeah. are hollow. Yeah. So then they also had like plains dwellers, which were like chasing down exotic animals, <laughs> and you know they have to be like at the peak of their physical condition. Right. You know, like they have their bodies have to be built that way. Um, so they they're usually stronger and faster, have more endurance. Yep. There was also people that settled in like river valleys, and uh, I would imagine their bodies just come like become thicker and sturdier. Like um, think of like a typical construction worker; they're usually pretty like thick and sturdy and short. I I, I almost wonder if it's more of an intellectual thing at that point because they maybe. were the, they were the first to build settlements. Yeah, maybe it was mines but yeah yeah like because you can have you can have like an an evolution or an adaptation within your brain yeah, right yeah. when all of a sudden you start using like the more of your brain power than someone else yeah that offers a huge um what was it called advantage yeah yeah right and then uh finally there's people that wandered between all the different tribes and i'd imagine they kind of just have a typical tau body really there's nothing notable about it yeah like, do you want to describe the tau body yeah so a tau's body uh has a couple interesting features on it um first of all their skin is blue they're humanoid by the way yeah bipedal bipedal mm -hmm. so two legs two arms one head one torso <laughs> one penis <laughs> no actually what <laughs> Um, but they kind of more have like animal type legs, right? Yeah, so they, yeah. they have hoofs. And one of my biggest pet peeves as gay as this is when I see like a, a converted Tau model and they put like a fire warrior body on an Imperial Guardsman's legs. And I'm like, oh. where's the hooves? Where is the hooves? The legs don't even look like they bend normally though. Yeah, like they, they look a little different. Like Yeah. Like they, they have that backwards like little bit, yeah. like the heel. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And 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 conversions like that always kinda irk me where it's just like the, the big one that I've been noticing. Better that your model had been in lava. <laughs> it, yeah. it sounds like the almost like a mythical, like the fawns. You know? <sighs> yeah. Almost, yeah. but I don't think they're like hairy. Like, no, no, fawns, they're not hairy, but, but like. Yeah, like the, the whole they like would yeah, their structure. Yeah, yes, yeah. I would agree. But uh, yeah. Um, really large eyes, too, from what I see on pictures. Hmm. Like they seem to like have eyes that are much bigger than ours. Interesting. Like their nose doesn't look nearly as pronounced if they have one. I feel like, like I've that. only seen Tal with, I guess I haven't looked into it as much, but with, like, helmets on and, and Yeah, masks. usually they wear helmets. Yeah. So uh, Something we were um, discussing is that their life expectancy. Yeah, apparently they only live, like, 40 years. Like, average. Oh, really? That's pathetic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, so then I brought up the point when we were talking, like, the average human only lives like probably 20 years yeah uh, like for in, like in 40k right because um, oh, i mean 40. 20 does seem a little low no it does not at all because like so the vast majority of the population is in the imperial guard right yeah and like this is official games workshop lore where the average guardsman guardsman only lives 15 hours <laughs> oh, <laughs> what what yeah yeah <laughs> that seems lives, a little only 15 hours. like as soon as you're drafted in and like on your first planet fall, 15 hours, that's that's your life oh, expectancy. But how old are they when they're drafted? So I would imagine, like, they draft them around the age of 16, like, at that to age. 18, yeah. Oh. yeah Somewhere like, in there is their draft. At that role. age, you're you're strong enough to be able to run with a full-grown adult and, like, you mm. know. Um, yeah, like, there are, like, uh, Cadian white shields that are, like, recruited when they're, like, you know, super young, like 10. Hmm. But. So the Tau, the Tau uh, lifespan is forty years in the forty first millennium. Yeah. yeah, we're not talking like, like before they were space. Well, I don't think that it has a difference really, because but that, that they aren't constrained by. But like, that's kind of weird to me because like even humans' life expectancy four thousand years ago was like was like 30 years right 30 yeah. 40 years sure. but because of medical advances well and like you would think that the tau would go through the same yeah is that's it their what, is that, it their lifespan or their life expectancy is that what that is i think it's lifespan but the thing is like i know your point jordan like most people would only live 30 years like yeah. in the middle ages yeah but that was more just due to like Sickness. it wasn't like yeah it wasn't yeah, like yeah. We it wasn't only body live. degradation yeah, no i yeah. know i know so, so we're saying yeah. like the tau bodies will degrade at that yeah. rate and yeah, you, there's yeah. nothing you can do to stop you can't fix yeah. death like yeah, yeah. Right. No, 40 know, years that's like yeah. their degrading point 
which is crazy to me. Like normally in like a fantasy or sci-fi setting, like humans are one of the shortest lived races. And then you all like... Not you, always. I've, I know a couple. Well, I would sci- say normally. Yeah, I like, guess so. The normal expectation yeah. for me is that like when, when humanity encounters another race, um, they are better than humanity. You know, like case in point, the Eldar better than humanity they'll live longer than humanity um like i'm assuming orcs will live forever <laughs> as yeah. long as they don't kill each other yeah um necron obviously immortal um trying to think of what else crew crew <laughs> have long life lifespans do they they do i guess it depends on what they eat as yeah. well well they're probably cold-blooded so what a oh. birds normally yeah. yeah that's true cold-blooded animals can live a lot longer usually are birds cold blooded? No. No, no, no. Uh, no. I was thinking do birds Kruger. have blood? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <know. laughs> I'm sure we could find yes. proof of that. <laughs> but I couldn't answer that confidently for yeah. some reason. <laughs> Obviously, they have blood. <laughs> Classic. Uh, we'll get into the crude eventually. Yeah. But, uh, and a couple other noticeable features about uh, Tau. They have three fingers, one thumb. It honestly, when I see it, it just looks like four fingers. Like they're the two on the bottom portion of the hand. You're they look crew. like the same. Am I? Yeah. Tal, they just have three fingers. Oh, one thumb. okay. Which is another thing I always find amusing when people model a las gun on a Tal, and he's got a human hand. <laughs> a human hand, and you're like, why? <laughs> why people? <laughs> um, sorry, I'm I'm fascinated with the physiology stuff, but uh, yeah. The would it be like safe to assume that Tao have like maybe like a super fast metabolism that they would because because their lifespans are so short maybe they wouldn't need as much sleep and and like they could uh, process things even much faster like uh, neurologically than possibly humans could because you think you think that such a fast degradation would mean like like their body is like expending that much more yeah exactly. (laughs) It's possible. I, I, I even have almost a, a piece of um, evidence to like support that is when I was reading about the battle suits is they were saying there's so much information being fed yeah. into like the helmet is that it takes so much to actually uh, read all that information and then to logically disperse it back out and make your tactical decisions. Hmm. Like they made it sound like other people would be overloaded and inundated hmm. with information. So it is possible they have that higher mm. ability to... Th- but I, I wouldn't go nearly as far as to compare it with the Eldar. Yeah. Yeah. No. Mm. yeah. It also could just amount to, like, the training that they receive, and yeah. they've been breeding it for generations. Like, like, physically, though, Tau are inferior to humans. Yes, like a single um, Tau versus a but, single oh, really? Human. Mm. Yeah, physically they are. Like, they're probably... Five five height wise. Yeah, yeah. But there, since like the towel, like they have like different types of towel. Like if we, you're a mountain towel, that towel might be six five. The air know? towel. Yeah. yeah, the air. Yeah. Mm. Um. So they do have different ones, but the yeah, average yeah. ones around five yeah. five. And and also we're talking about the beginning towel kind of here. Yeah. Which gets even crazier uh, a little later in their history when the ethereals come and the caste system becomes formalized. Yeah. Mm. The, we'll I mentioned one more notable feature sure. that they have, and then we'll jump onto the ethereals. Um, so the other noticeable feature is their heads. They have a slit in it, it, in between their running from basically where you have a nose kind of to your top of your forehead. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And, you, you, uh, you do see it in a lot of the pictures, just like a little yeah. gap. And, and I don't know if this is official or if this is just something, uh, Conjecture. third party modelers like to do, but like where a male towel has like a straight line, a female towel almost has like a Y on their forehead for their slit. Oh. Mm with the Y facing up, so, like, actually a Y. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if that's just the third-party party thing to, like, kind of distinguish. Yeah. I should look at Shadow Shadow Sun. I can't say I've ever noticed that. Hmm. Um, that's all. <clears throat> that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and there are, you know, the differences in society. If you grow up on the plains, you're going to have a different idea, an ideology, different upbringing, different... Um, sorry. Uh like different what you like consider like a life goal than someone who grew up on a mountain and someone who grew up on um 
in, in like a river in a settlement and that yeah. like that's very comparative to how humans you know you can compare it to us and that we value different things depending on where we're from yeah yeah so um and they developed like that but what's crazy is because they did develop so quickly uh not only in terms of their evolution and their adaptation to their uh surroundings but also with technology and uh, that they ended up fighting um and they created the montau the terror age what is it called the dark great night or death age death, death age. age or the terror yeah someone has lexicanum open <laughs> <laughs> no, that was all from my head. <laughs> I'm more impressed that way. I'm willing to believe it. Uh, yeah, the Montau, it, it's like a civil war, really. But it, it, it is, it's described in the Codex as a pop, ap, 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 applesauce. No, it's uh, <laughs> apocalyptic. Hmm. Yeah, so it, it's it's described as like it's going to end the Tau if it continues. Because they, they're just, they weren't, their brains weren't large enough to actually handle all the tech like they had no ah, gosh i don't know exactly what i think I'm you're playing up the tech too much they had just primitive firearms like basic black powder like yeah but it was developed like quickly it, well sure that, like, but that's, like that's what all they, it takes is one guy to develop black powder and then boom black powder like there is not yeah but black pa- that's black powder versus the plains warriors who maybe had bark I'm, armor no, I know. I'm just right, saying so that's a huge they're not, jump. Sure, because sure. like when it's you like, look at the human advancement, we had so much in between it. Like from from being nomads to having black powder, we had huge jumps. Like we had the ability to forge things in between there, and you go from bronze, and then you hit iron, and then you hit steel. Right? They could have had all that too. I'm I'm just but it, it sure. does in the codex. It does say it was so such a large jump in technology that they weren't capable of it yet. They weren't um, able to handle it. Sure. As soon as you bring a firearm in, doesn't matter any other steps, it changes the game. Like, right, absolutely. And but, it's... Yeah. But, I mean, kind of yes and no, because billet, bullets back in, like, the Civil War area could be stopped by, like, wicker baskets. Like, you weave enough, like, armor on yourself, like a bullet will... will it'll stop it uh, yeah absolutely sure the, I don't know the, the, the stopping power of the bullet like wasn't that strong so when you're talking like primitive firearms might not be that big of a game changer but they did say it just it happens yeah. so recklessly yeah 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 oh boy um i don't know i guess there's no good a time to bring in the ethereals than the montau because that's <laughs> when they come in really yes <laughs> <laughs> any other time would actually be weird uh, but the Montau is happening, and there's a city called uh, Fio Town. <laughs> a lot of things have Tau in the title. Yes, yeah. Fio Town. Yeah. Uh, and it's where there was the River Valley uh, people had built a settlement, and the Fire Warriors were sieging it. And they were sieging it for five years. Um, and they were able to hold it off, but then disease was starting to like grow and become rampant. And I believe the Fire Warriors were... Uh, the Plains Warriors. But. E- e- sorry, yes, at this point, they were just Plains yeah. Warriors. They were currently uh, winning the siege, which would have like destroyed the city of Fiao Tun. And all of a sudden, these bright lights appear in the sky. And that's the advent of the Ethereals. Yeah. Which is a completely separate Tau group. Yeah, so now we have like five distinct types of Tau. Um, and they show up. And there's an ethereal that goes to each group. One goes to the the city, and one goes to the the plains people. And they, over the course of a night, they basically broker a truce. And in yeah. the morning, everyone's shaking hands. Yeah. Happy times. And then they say it only takes a few years for them to go to everyone on the planet and get them all to work together. Which yeah. is insane, because these people had no reason to work together before this at all. Yeah. And they do say that when an ethereal, when they first walked in, they kind of exuded like an authority that was difficult to argue with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, it was the I think it was the philosophy that they brought though that really united the Tao. Yeah, yeah. but it, like yes, like that's definitely what got it all together. But it, it was even that their presence was difficult enough. Like mm. they just you looked at them and you just understood that this person knew what they were talking about. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, there's a lot of speculation with the ethereals so yeah a lot we'll, we'll give you a little teaser here at the end of this episode our tales of the warp is going to be a, our conversation about ethereals um 
So it'll I think, be a good one too. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff. So I think that's all we're going to mention and not yeah. drop too much information about them now and save it for the end. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so they basically unite the entire Tau planet over the course of a couple of years. Yeah. Then. Uh, they, and they're preaching what's called the greater good. Yeah, yeah. Um, where everyone works together essentially for the yeah, greater good you, of the race. Yeah, ex- for the empire. Like you sacrifice, like everyone needs to make the sacrifice. Yeah. And if you have to, you will sacrifice for the empire. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's also. But it's everyone little- is equal. Like everyone is equally honored. Like if you're just flipping burgers at a McDonald's drive-through, you you have a valued place in society. Mm-hmm. And it's not even just members of their own race either. Like, right. Yeah. The yeah. greater good extends. You know. Yeah, I guess it does to of. the galaxy. As yeah. long as you are part of. Yeah. As the long empire. as you you come under it. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But like even coming under it, you still have a lot of autonomy. <clears throat> Yeah, and if you are like, as long as you follow the basic tenets of the yeah, greater good, right. yeah. they give you. Right. Yeah, they allow like your yeah. So it's to not exist. just like completely like uh, it's not assimilation. Yeah, by yeah, any exactly. means, no. Yeah, not like like Borg from Star Trek, where it's like yeah, completely. I've never, I've never seen Star Trek. Oh no! <laughs> well, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Star Trek, but I want something with I, fifty seasons. I like Star Trek too, yeah, because there is so many of them, and I can just turn it on and I can paint. And it's the type of show where you don't have to be watching it, mm. but like you can watch it. But I can paint and watch it, and life is good. Have you seen the the new one? No, uh, what is Discovery? Dis- Discovery, yeah. No, I haven't. I've seen it, the movies. Yeah, am it's I, interesting. Am I cool now? <laughs> No, no one in Star Trek is cool. Oh, <laughs> hey! <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> derailed. Um, it's that easy to derail us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's jump ahead now about three thousand years, I think. So now we're at like, what is the first sphere of expansion? Uh, well, do you want to kind of touch on the caste systems? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So. Over the next 3,000 years, they developed the caste systems, which is, uh, there's five castes. There's the fire caste, earth caste, air caste, water caste, and then the ethereal caste. And so we'll start with the, the fire caste first. So these were the original plains dwellers, like these uh, Tau that are physically superior to all the other ones who, are, who have been chasing exotic animals around, hunting them, eating them, getting bigger and stronger. This cast became the warrior cast. Um, and I would imagine for the first, like, 3,000 years, they don't have a lot to do. Because there, there's no other, like, uh, like enemies on the planet. And it's not like they're on a death world where it's right. like they're constantly trying to, yeah. like, fend off, you know, T-Rexes or something wild. Mm-hmm. So I'd imagine for the first, like, 3,000 years, they're just training. Tra- training, training yeah. But, like, in a 40-year lifespan, it's, like... Right. Probably developing um, weapons technology. Well, actually, that's the, the um, Earth cast. The Earth cast. Yeah, so we'll sense. talk about them next. Uh, the Earth cast is the builders, the scientists, engineers. Um, engineers. They're, they're but, the yeah, intellectual, I'll... brainy, creative types. Yeah, and it did say like the majority of the Earth cast are going to be the workers, and yeah. then the exceptional ones become their engineers yeah. and doctors and scientists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because everyone has a role, and right? And these people came from the river people, the, the people in the city of Fiautan. Fiotan. Yeah, Fiotan. that would be one of them. And uh, yeah, and there's probably other cities too. But because they they've already were developing their minds or whatever, like Eric was saying, like they were already developing agriculture and yeah, they were forging stuff and stuff like that. Yeah, way back in the day, they just they had the ability to do it, so they they worked on it. Now yeah. they're starting architecture yeah. and they're looking at engineering and how to build walls and structures and stuff. So that's like their shtick, right? Yeah. So then after them, we have the water cast, which were uh, the wandering tribes or the wandering people who just yeah, went yeah. from tribe to tribe. So now they took up a place of messengers and communicators, um, politicians. Yeah. They became the bureaucrats. Mm-hmm. Traders yeah. too. Yeah. 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 It, it, it fits a lot of that. Actually, you can look at like the, like they are the societal leaders like the politicians like Marcus saying and the bureaucrats but they also were responsible for uh, especially back in the day trading between like the fire people the the plains people and the river valley and the mountain they would travel between them with goods and stuff right so yeah. they they were good at negotiating yeah. with everyone yeah. which kind of lends to their ambassador role cuz they're one of like when when a tau actually encounters an alien race they're one of the first to go over and speak with them mm-hmm. yeah and then we have the air cast. 
And these were those uh, ones with the wings and stuff, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're also called the Invisible Cast. Yeah, they're the least seen. Yeah. Uh, especially in 40K. Um, so they're an interesting cast, too, because like up until they... Uh, develop like spaceships like i don't know what did what, they do what role they would have like right. they're supposed to in, in 40k they they run the the tau fleet yep. so they're in charge of all the spaceships and all the communications and, and that kind of thing where you know when they're evolving like yeah there were no spaceships they're, they're, yeah there were no spaceships so were they just messengers at that point just simple messengers flying around giving messages like yeah. Like, that's the only thing I can assume. Yeah. But then that, like, has a lot of crossover with, like, the... The water. The water cast, like... Yeah. The water cast are the one writing the messages, and then the air cast are the one delivering <laughs> but, them. I mean, just potential postal men. service. Yeah, yeah right. they're just a postal service. <laughs> I, I mean, that, that's that potentially that's sure. all it is, right? Yeah. But it's it's really when the uh, their tech advances enough to where they have, like, mm-hmm. the vehicles and the, and the yeah. fleets that they really step into their own. Yeah. But I would just assume it's just a really small cast. Yeah, it could yeah. be. Right? Yeah. Like, it's not nearly... Like, the Earth is the most numerous mm-hmm. yeah right that's the the their day-to-day workers and everything yeah. <laughs> and then um i would assume fire and, and water or fire and water have to be pretty similar in size and then i would say or at least they're in the middle and then yeah. the air is going to be the least oh and then mm-hmm. ethereal would be actually at the yeah and the then least. finally got the ethereals which we talked a little bit about yeah. um they're the leaders essentially yeah. spiritual and uh, um, what's the other word they use kingly how, royalty Something. yeah almost yeah we'll, we'll get more into them yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh but they're they're essentially the overall ruling class like mm-hmm. everyone all the classes have their own leaders but then you still need a leader leading the race as a whole mm-hmm. sounds like they're almost like an aristocracy or something they're that's they're a like, big word jordan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like the like a ruling class that like you can only be born into well oh that, yeah. that's another thing to mention yeah. probably about the cast is that interbreeding is forbidden oh, by really? the ethereals yeah. so if your parents were fire warriors <clears throat> you are mm-hmm. like you're a fire cast member and there's yeah. no going yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of that but it's, so it's ethereal, in your dna too right like eth- well yeah exactly now that like, the breeding has been going but ethereal can only ever birth an ethereal yeah mm. right so a water cast can only ever birth a water cast yeah. and it is um it is like bred in their DNA now because they've been weeding out like the traits that they don't like yeah. for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. But they've, and they've kind of been like um, specializing in, in mm-hmm. their, in their caste systems. And you hear about that most in the fire cast that, you know, they've weeded out the weak physical imperfections mm-hmm. in the fire cast to just build like a better warrior. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's interesting too, with this caste system, cause, um, they they kind of all accept their role in the in for the society. greater good. Yeah, yeah. And they accept their function, right? They're not they're not trying to, you know. Yeah. So Tao really are communists, like, because everyone is treated equal. It doesn't matter if you're, like I said, that guy flipping burgers or you're the most honored fire warrior commander. Like everyone is equal. So when everyone is equal, you know, like, and in perfect communism, if it worked, it would be a good <laughs> thing. But it never really works, except for in fantasy. <laughs> right, like, except for in the Tau. Yeah. In a like, race that doesn't exist. No, it's true. Uh, yeah. yeah, so like you can find that like uh that uh fulfillment in your whatever you're doing because you know no matter what you're gonna be taken care of and like you're contributing and mm-hmm. you're valued. Yeah, and they really do I think um kind of let go of their, their individuality in all of this. Yeah. Well yeah. you definitely lose something. Right. But it's like it's is not it? like they're like mindless bugs. No, or no, no, of course but not. I know what you were saying. Yeah. Like, yeah, you do lose a little bit because yeah. if you're a fire well, warrior you and to, you're right? feeling like you want to go draw a painting, sure, you could do that on your personal time, I'm sure. But it's, but it's you, that's, expected that you put down the paintbrush and function, pick up the gun. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's definitely... It, it, it was interesting to me to think like, well, like, what happens if like a fire warrior ever falls in love with like a, like a water cast member? Like is that like for like Romeo and Juliet style story? <laughs> no, they wouldn't find each other appealing sexually. I, I know, but like it'd be weird. Would it? It'd be very awkward. Have I don't you, know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. 
I like where this is going. <laughs> yeah. Candles in the back. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is, interbreeding is forbidden. Kind of yeah. just to keep, like, the Fire Warriors have spent so long building this perfect person that they just, they're not allow it. So, it is definitely space communism. Yeah. Ultimately. Right. Yeah. But it is... To all of our understanding and current viewing, it's space communism that works. Yeah. <laughs> and has been working. Yeah. So for a while. Exactly. Um, so we wanna yeah. get on the cast, jump into the first sphere. Yeah. So the way Tau progression happens is they they work in like spheres of expansion, which is basically just like a crusade. A crusade essentially. Everyone loves the crusades. Yeah. <laughs> Like everyone has their own. That joke's of- outplayed. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I kind of had that downward yeah, tone, exactly, you know. Exactly. But uh, yeah, everyone has their own version of expansion, and this is theirs. And uh, throughout their history, they've had five, but like really, I'd say almost six. Like so, the first like the the very first one. It, they don't mention, but that's, like, their development from, like, planes people to uh, spacefaring. Okay. But then, like, the official first one is the first sphere, <laughs> sphere of can, expansion. I can see why you would say that. Yeah, like, it's not official, and, yeah. It's, it's, just, m- it's more just like, hey, now we're a player, like, on the galactic scale. Yeah. Like, this is our advancement first. Yeah. But, yeah. So, the first sphere of expansion is when they first leave their planet. And they did it uh, on, like, colony ships. And this age happened for, what do we say, like, 2,000 years uh, or something like that? Just over 1,400. 1,400, yeah. yeah. Uh, and they made colony ships, and they f- just flew off to the nearest planet and tried to settle it. Yeah. Well, it's actually interesting. In their own star system, there's, like, a large number of habitable planets. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the amount of aliens they encounter in just their small region of space is it's crazy. Yeah, it's lots. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, and in this first one, so one of the reasons uh, it probably lasts so long is that their ships just weren't capable of fast travel. Yeah, that would be the big thing. Right, there would have been whole generations that were born, raised, and died on these ships as they're traveling. Yeah, because fourteen hundred years, what would that be? How many generations? That's, it's a lot. Like that's for sure. Thirty-five. Thirty-five generations. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Potentially. Yeah, Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. But this is also um, where they start, like, preaching the greater good to other people. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so this is when they make their first contact with other aliens in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Um, The very first aliens they encounter are the Porkun. Pocktroons. Pocktroons. Yeah. And uh, they didn't last very long. Nope. They, but I would uh, love to get into that um, later. They had a peaceful negotiation. Yeah, they were folded then, into the greater group. Yeah, like uh, they, they they became friends, trading partners, allies, or yeah. whatever. But then they died to a, a plague or yeah. a disease or something like that. And then the Tau just assimilated their world, yeah. which was habitable. So Yeah. Um, they also ran into um, the... You want to ramble off a bunch uh, of names? You're yeah. probably better at reading than I am. In the, well, in the beginning, in this first one, it's the Nikasar the Thraxians, the Anthrazods, and the Brachyura, and the Crute. Yeah. So those are like, those are the ones that actually are here, and they're here to stay. Yeah. But over the course of all their spheres, they encounter all um, these yeah. other ones, which you can read off now. But they don't meet them right now. No. But we're not going to just tell you when they meet them, because right. whatever. We'll so, just t- tell you now. Yeah. These are all the ones that they've encountered and accepted into the greater good. Yeah, and that's the key. Accepted it. Yeah. So all the ones I mentioned, plus the Demiurg, the Formosians, the Gaugs, Ganache, Greet, um, they do accept humans, which are called the Guevesa. Yep. And these are pockets of Imperial Guardsmen that have kind of laid down their arms and accepted the greater good. Yeah, we'll mm-hmm. get more into how that happens. Yeah. Uh, then we have the Hrenian, the Geatrix, the Moralian, the Nagi, the Ranghan, the Vespid, the Yabby Yabby. The Yabby Yabby. <laughs> uh, and there is yabby, a race yabby, yabby, yabby. that they attempted to bring into the greater good and then they realized this would never ever happen and it's the orcs yeah and they actually have kind of like a hatred for the orcs now i did i saw it mentioned a couple times as i was reading that they actually hate like they were like they will go out of their way to kill to to exterminate orcs yeah because it's just like it's just ultimate violence and chaos and it's just like it's kind of like the antithesis right exactly yeah yeah 
Yeah, and, and e- I can even see orcs that. don't work with orcs. Like, yeah, like, the, yeah, their whole purpose is just destruction and fighting. Yeah, power, which is the greater good. Like, you're supposed to sacrifice those things for it. Yeah, yeah. So the first sphere of expansion, they're able to set up like eight worlds. I believe. Um, I was reading a sept is actually a star system. Okay, so uh, eight, eight star, star systems. systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a, a decent amount, yeah. but it makes sense because it was over fourteen hundred years. It's a long, yeah, crusade slash <laughs> sphere. I keep wanting to say crusade. <laughs> um, so then we get into the second sphere. Yeah, and the second sphere is um, that's when humanity actually touches the Tau again, because the Tau fight right up to the. Uh, eastern edge of human territory yeah so they would have had they have like border skirmishes and stuff but there's nothing there's nothing too crazy it's not really like all-out war at this point it's more just contact again yeah like yeah i'm assuming like small like little outpost worlds that have like minimal defenses like yeah yeah. they're folded into Um, the town another notable thing to mention too about uh this sphere is they develop like the faster than life travel or nzf yeah. Hyper light drive or something. Yeah. It, it's not full warp technology, but it's. Doesn't it skim? Yeah. It skims the warp. Like, yeah. So they make little jumps and they touch the warp like briefly and then they, they stop. Um, I, in what I was reading, because uh, the codex is from the Tau perspective. Yeah. And they were saying, like, oh, they fought these people that have uh, space ri- uh, space ripping technology. Yeah. And, I, like, I really thought about it. Like, what would you do, like, a race that is as technologically advanced as the Tau, all of a sudden to find, like, humanity, and they don't understand anything, like, about the war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? And all of a sudden you see these people just rip holes in reality and, like, emerge. Like, that's sweet. Yeah, it would be wild. Yeah. 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 And so then they're like, oh my gosh, like all this thing. I don't know. It was really cool to me to read yeah. that from someone else's perspective. Because for me, yeah. I see the progression in humanity. Yeah. But. yeah, so they do their next sphere. I'm sure they conquer a couple more worlds. Yeah, that's actually a so huge on. one. Yeah. That's the Damocles. Um, Crusade. Isn't that yeah. the third? No, the Damocles is what halts the second. Mm-hmm. The Damocles Crusade oh, halts the yeah. second. And then that creates the Damocles Gulf. Yeah, so that's basically their their conflict with humanity yeah and the third is when things start getting really nasty i thought that was the the damocles crusade was the third um i could be wrong no eric's right it's yeah. the okay. second yeah okay um yeah but so they fight each other and they basically reach a stalemate and uh both sides kind of withdraw or kind yeah. of concede different worlds or they kind of make an uneasy truth truce yeah kind of just like a like we won't touch you you won't touch yeah. us and and this is one of the ways that uh a lot of humans join the tau empire because like they're basically abandoned to this planet like the imperium's like sorry we just we don't have the resources to defend your planet so then the humans on the planet either can fight till they're dead or they can join the tau empire yeah. so a lot of them do join mm-hmm <laughs> But then, like, we're we're always talking about such, like, large time spans where, like, thousands of years happen. So, or, or at least hundreds. So, like, the original people on the planet who were conquered by the Tau or joined the Tau, like, they die off and their kids, like, start to actually like the Tau and, like... Right, because they, they grow up all with the, them. Yeah, and it's, like, a lot of the old prejudices die. And, like, mm-hmm. the Imperium's a horrible place to live. So when you join the Tau perfect society right yeah it seems like a good thing so it, it's interesting though i read that the tau even let them still worship the emperor really yeah i did not read that hmm. like, like they'll I, let them i suppose as it long makes as they, sense like as long as you're still contributing doing it, yeah, yeah like the worship of the emperor isn't a bad thing in and of itself like, it's what it's normally what religion would do to you that's the bad thing yeah right that's it is an it i wouldn't have come there on my own but it makes <sighs> sense to me Mm-hmm. that they would allow it because a lot of like the subcultures like they're allowed their own place yeah like they're not good. assimilating them fully yeah. they're just uh working together really yeah it, it's really like a like let's pool everything together yeah. like what can you bring to the table because yeah. every even those a bunch of those races like they have their own place in mm-hmm. the uh in the empire yeah we do have a uh minor xenos episode planned in three episodes i think two something like that something like that yeah maybe four but uh 
where we are going to get into all these, like the Niska, the Demiurg, all yeah. these. The Crute. That'll be the really crude. interesting, actually. Yeah, because like, like there's things. there's so many Xenos races in the galaxy, but some of them only have one sentence on them, where others have, you know, yeah, quite like the an crude, established... Yeah, the Crute are actually like an established race, yeah. whereas like the Vespid aren't. Right? Not the, as much. The Thraxians but, aren't, yeah. right? So Yeah, but uh, yeah, so we will have a lot more information on them coming up here. Quick. Yeah. Um... Third sphere of expansion? Uh, third sphere is when they actually dive into Imperial territory. Like, this is like a big push. So they were hanging out on the Eastern Fred fringe, and now they push hard into the Eastern uh, territory. And um, this is, I believe, where the Farsight Enclave comes into play? Um, yeah, so they push in. Yeah, and then I think they've stalemated again, and then everyone withdraws again. The three ethereals uh, die actually. Oh, and that's why everyone withdraws, or the Tau start p- stop. Well, pushing? that's that's why. Uh, what's his name? Farsight. Yeah, that's why Farsight actually leaves because his ethereals die. Yeah, they get killed, and so he, normally the expected thing to do is to fold back into the empire. Right, you go back. You, I don't know, get new ethereals. <laughs> and get then new you. Leadership, yeah. Right, yeah. And then you go again. But he actually didn't return to. Um, oh Tau space. Goodness. Yeah, he didn't return to the Empire. Yeah. He stayed where he was, like right in, in like the eastern area yeah. on the eastern edge. Yeah. And he's kind of created like his own empire in here. Yeah. Uh, which the ethereals now have deemed a dead zone. And no one in the Tau Empire is allowed to go into this area or even communicate in it. Yeah. But they do, the Ethereals do constantly send drones in. Yeah. To and like monitor look. And, yeah. Interesting thing. Huh. This happened hundreds of years ago. Yeah. Farsight is still alive. Rumored to be. No, he is. No, he is. Yeah. Rumored to be. No, they take pictures of him. So. With the drones. Either it, Farsight is like a name, like, and you adopt the name and you adopt his Oh, it's one of those or, things. Yeah. Like I don't think so. His, I read yeah, that yeah. his sword literally keeps him alive. Uh, I don't like, know if that is one of those things where Games Workshop has actually clarified it nowadays. Oh, but gotcha. back in the day, it was rumored that, yeah, like his oh, sword really? would like steal people's souls, and that's how he stayed alive forever. Mm. Or, yeah. yeah. They might have clarified it. You might be right. I, I, I did read it on the Lexicanum, so. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that's not. Okay, not yeah, codex, you're right. It, on the Lexicanum, it does say. Um, it could be that another has taken up his mantle yeah. or that the real commander is extending his lifespan through some technological process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, what I had read in the in the codex is that they send drones which are constantly shot down by uh, the people who are in the enclave, Yeah. but that they are monitoring Farsight and that they are very interested in how he is still alive. Yeah. But whether or not that's actually him, that's the question. Yeah. Okay. Because he did find like a demon, or it's not necessarily a demon sword, but he this alien artifact sword so yeah that might play into the dawn it. blade i think yeah yeah it's pretty yeah. cool though it is i love his model actually yeah. like a battle suit with a cool sword and well he's he's pretty badass too though like could somebody even just replace him and take his name because yeah he like a, a, a genius yes okay this is where it was interesting it's on Moloch. I, I read that too, but I think it was a different Moloch, because this one was like... It is it was Ar- a- Arthas Ar- Moloch. Yeah, and I don't think it's the same Moloch. In uh, a lot of times, uh, or especially within Tau um, like culture, yeah. when they uh, accept a sept into the fold, so that would be a whole star system, yeah. the star system is named after the prime planet. Yeah. So like the Tau star system would be called Tau. Mm-hmm. And like the humans, like the the solar system that we have would be called Terra. Yeah. Right? So maybe like they're actually at the Moloch star system. Hmm. Potentially? It's, it's possible. It seems uh, odd that they would do Moloch twice. <sighs> but hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's possible. There's no connection there besides that they use the same same name. Yeah, um, it does say that the Dawn Blade it was um, it was found in a mysterious temple on the world Arthas Moloch, using it to fight creatures that were almost certainly chaos demons. Hmm. So it's an anti demonic blade. I yeah. mean, it could just be like a warp tool, like the Anathame was. Yeah, 
right? You, you never know. Or like a gray knight force weapon. Exactly. Like it's purified or yeah. Whatever, like could be interesting. Um, yeah, it might be Moloch, the same Moloch. I can neither confirm nor deny it. Yeah, that one. That one. That one could be interesting. Anyway, Farsight is a really cool character. He just is within Tau. Yeah. Um. Anything else we want to talk about him? Uh, yeah, I mean, he kind of just breaks off, starts his own empire. Yeah, and, and he's really the only Tau to do this. Yes. Everyone else is kind of folded within the greater good. Uh, but it, So something that Farsight actually had been having these doubts for a while. Uh, he had seen his, like, his compatriots give up their lives, like, on the fields of battle and wonder, like, is this really worth it? Yeah. And, and so he kind of had the seeds of doubt in his mind because everyone you follow unquestioningly yeah. like when ethereal tells you that like go take this planet and die in the process you do it yeah like you don't even you you say thank you for the opportunity but he's kind of questioned it and it's kind of it lends that sour note you know when yeah. everyone is getting along it all works fine yeah but as soon as that one person starts questioning whether the sacrifice you're making is actually worth it and making yeah. a difference that's when the seeds of doubt start coming yeah and that's where we're going to talk a lot in the tales of the war Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, okay, so let that kind of there are still four and five for the spheres of expansion. Yeah, but we're not going to mention them right now. This is new forty k lore. Yeah, that happens in like nine 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 yeah, and forty one. The, yeah, and there's a bunch of things that happen almost simultaneously. Yeah, that we're gonna all talk about in an episode simultaneously because mm-hmm. they all kind of play off each other. So yeah, but that that's pretty much like how they start expanding yeah. eventually get that drive that allows like really close to warp travel but not yeah. quite and yeah really good guys giving everyone just some love and guidance <laughs> within the greater good um something else we're going to talk about is the technology of the tau super briefly um yeah i guess the first thing just being that it was massive jumps yeah yeah so they say like in 2000 years essentially they go from being like developing their first black powder weapons all the way to being spacefaring and like being able to have like these crazy weapons and yeah which is like when you think about it like when was black powder invented oh actually black powder has been around for us for a long time yeah but yeah Yeah, maybe a thousand years maybe yeah but it's not inconceivable that like within a thousand years like we're spacefaring no not at all but but it it is a diff. there's a difference between like humanity from right now to like let's say the dark age of technology like that's a long period of time and and, yeah yeah Yeah. and so now like these tau are even able to contend with like the astartes like with their weapons yeah that's a that's a big thing because it took humanity actual like tens of thousands of years to develop this although interesting thought we would also advance a lot faster if we united as a race as well under you know under but i don't uh tolerate equality or other people so it's never gonna happen <laughs> but it wouldn't be your choice it I, is my choice no, i'm just saying though the, like the, the thing i will be, fight to if the, death the emperor if the emperor hatred if, what <laughs> what is happening <laughs> if the emperor were to come and tell everyone like this is how it is now yeah right like you have no choice but I'm just saying, if we did, yeah. our technology would advance. We also placed a lot Wait. of restrictions on tech. Yeah. I also yeah. think, like, there's no, like, if you're talking about humanity right now, there's no, like, deep existential threat that humanity as a whole faces. Yeah. Whereas I think, like, in this universe, you you have these other races that you're encountering, and it's sort of a unifying force yeah. when you it, have... It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, right now, that like... If we had an asteroid coming to hit Earth, like, we would all... There is one. Oh, really? You guys haven't heard about that? No. No, there's actually there's an asteroid. One. No, there's, like, a, a decent-sized one coming. Uh, but it's not necessarily going to hit Earth, but it's going right. to pass extremely close. Yeah, yeah. And NASA is talking about, like, potential, like, uh, protocols for, like, if it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, on that side note, Yellowstone. Have you guys heard about that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the, like, yeah. that's nuts. Yeah. So, because the, the, originally they thought that the Yellowstone volcano uh, would take thousands of years to build up, but now they're saying it could be more like decades yeah, yeah, to yeah, build yeah. up. Yeah. And in the past seven years, it bulged 25 centimeters. Hmm. Yeah. That is a lot. Yeah, in I heard. seven years. I heard about that. Yeah. But, yeah, like, like, some sort of deep existential threat that threatens all of us. Yeah. would be like a unifying 
thing. You right would way. think, but with humanity, <laughs> you probably can never not. Tell. Yeah. Because we're barbarians. <laughs> we're animals. Well, the Ethereals even used um, humans as that scapegoat. <clears throat> like in one of their spheres, I believe it was in the third. Hmm. That's because that's when they suffered their defeat and sure. they were sent back. The Ethereals actually whipped up the Tau and kind of like a painted humanity as like like one of the enemies of the Tau, mm. and like were able to use that to their advantage to con- like continue rationalizing like this uh, fight in this yeah, year expansion. Yeah, mm. yeah. interesting. Uh, Ethereals not always the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for technology for me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I want to talk about Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> so for technology for me, and what I think of first when I think of Tau technology, I think of their battle suits. Yeah. Um, Christian always gives me crap because like he's like, do a Tau army. I'm like, you would not like the Tau army I would do. Battle suits everywhere. Like, well, I already love like mechs and battle suits. Yeah. And, well, evidenced by your knights. Yeah. Like I was originally, like my very first army was a Tau army because I liked battle suits. But that's like their key thing and a battle suit's like a one man piloted sometimes more there are battle suits that uh, are more some, than one. some take two yeah yeah some even take the, three the riptides do riptides sure, I'm not I, don't I know. believe so okay I know a couple do um, but that, that's like their big thing like these mobile mechs that are able to bring like crazy weapons to bear and be anywhere on the battlefield that they need to be yeah um, they've also developed like Rail rifles, pulse technology, ion weapons, um, safe <laughs> yeah. plasma weapons. That was a big joke. We were like, we we're discussing this, and and Mark's like writing what the tech is, and he writes safe plasma weapons, and I'm on my <laughs> iPad, and I see him write it, and I just giggle. <laughs> it's like, how do you kill a space marine captain? Give him a plasma pistol. <laughs> <laughs> He'll kill himself. Yeah, it'll explode in his hat. Yeah, yeah, like, and a lot of these technologies they go into a lot of detail about, but. Whatever. We don't need to talk about it. Yeah. I'm not a scientist. It It is... It's very different. Yeah. I, I do like that they do give details. Like, it just shows how much, like, is actually thought out about 40K when they tell you, like, how a pulse rifle hypothetically would work. Right. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. That, that yeah. brings the sci-fi aspect like, it, into it. It just makes the universe feel fleshed out and believable. Mm-hmm. Believable. Uh. <laughs> What's not believable about it? Okay. Seriously. The Emperor? What's, what's chaos, not be- chaos what's, gods? Yeah, but what's not believable about that, though? Actually, like, if you think about it, the Tau are one of the more feasible, you know, c- uh, oh, scenarios for... Yeah, the Tau yeah, itself. No, I thought like, we were talking about the universe. Even, oh. like, the universe, like, all the big scientists now are always going on about quantum theory and yeah. alternate dimensions and, like, you know, all these random thi- multi the multiverse. Well, theories are just theories. Sure, theories yeah. are just theories. Until but... until I saw evidence of it, I would be hard pressed to say I believe in oh, like, like the alternate. Yeah, no, but if it happened, I wouldn't be like, holy, like right. you would like, catch me off like, guard. Okay, sure, like that's how it you is know. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I also don't believe in Harry Potter. But their magic is like magic. It's like actual magic. It's not based off science. Right. Where like the warp is based off science. I'm not buddy. willing to get into this conversation <laughs> like, with you again. Like it, it's a parallel universe yeah, of I energy. Like it's. It sort of seems like their version of magic. It it, but. it totally is their version of magic, <laughs> but it is based off of like I actual energy. Like we got into the conversation. Like. I harness electricity all the time. Is that magic? No, it's just energy. Yeah. But like, to any primitive person. It doesn't matter what primitive people think though. But it totally does. Because if you're no, not it, if you're not able to harness it, which yeah. the Imperium cannot fully, the only one who really c- could would have been the Emperor Magnus would have had a good so, amount of control so over I, it. So I let's put it in a stupid term. Sure. I approach a tribe and I'm wearing a pair of jeans and pants. Like I'm I'm wearing what I'm wearing you're right a now. God. But I'm not the, like their appearance of me. Like yeah. that doesn't make me a god. That doesn't make me not scientific. But didn't we? That's did, just their, their mindset. Didn't we talk as well that um, like chaos, like corn, yeah, is technically not a god. He's no, just and I the, don't think he is either. But they, but they're called chaos gods, and people worship them as gods. So yeah. perspective has a lot to do it, with that. It does, but that doesn't change the underlying fact that it is based off of like actual energy which can be quantified and like like yeah like i i know i totally get what you're saying but i think the perspective actually has a lot to do with it 
I really do because if if we're talking about the emperor and how he like chooses like if he potentially chose this because he wants the worship like he is <laughs> trying to ascend and hit their everyone's perspective of him will change the reality sure yeah but and yeah like you're right you going to a bunch of tribes people in a jeans and shirt doesn't make you a god but to them you are a god you bring a but gun but to me it's just science right and technology absolutely but so to so everyone that- right now in the imperium the warp is unknowable a, it's heresy to claim to know the war. <laughs> and, and B, we huge, just don't... Huge tangent here. <laughs> and B, we just don't have the, the actual knowledge. Whereas if the Emperor comes but along... But that doesn't make it magic. That's my point. But to, to them, it does. No, to them, it doesn't. To them, it's still... Like, it's still something that is existent. Like, it's still... Yeah, okay. But Whatever. it is magic to them. It's not. To them. Warp travel is not magic to them. It's based off scientific principles that they've made. It's technology that they've But it's still unpredictable. Uh, so if you can't... All technology can be unpredictable. Yeah, but we would understand why it didn't work. Like, if a gun fails, we know why. We're like, ah, oh, this is clogged. This jammed. This clicked. Sure. If all of a sudden something is lost sure. in a warp storm, <laughs> did you really, like, predict it? <laughs> Let's go around the table. Who do we... Who do you guys agree with, Rio? Do you think it's, like... You heard the argument. What do you think? <laughs> Jordan, okay. <laughs> we go open his mouth. Science a or times. magic? Uh I think like I do I do get that the games workshop tries to explain it as like a scientific thing, but at the same time it there's no real like if you know what I mean, like mechanism in which someone is like connected to the warp other than that they are just like a living being hmm. and they're connected to the warp so to me that but also not every living being is connected to the warp like yes, the towel, yeah yeah right? yeah, like, yeah yeah so yeah. how do you like yeah like uh, to me what's it's the like actual well, distinction how yeah, could you create well, something that isn't connected? and that's where i say like what is the mechanism that actually connects right. them to to the warp in like other than that they have a soul right like I don't know, that seems kind of magical to me. <laughs> magical, just that we don't understand it yet. Yeah. Like, maybe, I'm willing yeah. to claim it's science. I'm just also willing to claim that no one... It's all, all, it's all in your definitions of magic, right? It's, it, it, this yeah, comes it down to how, how do you define magic, really, right? Sure. Yeah, it does. So we're all right. We're all yeah, wise. everyone's right. <laughs> Quality all around. I, I'm glad we're able to come to this in a rational... Uh, just let me text Mark. I didn't even flip the table once either in this conversation. <laughs> anyway, I'm thankful for that. I'm on where, the other side of the table. We're, so we're talking about safe plasma weapons. <laughs> Derailed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, we were just talking about how the universe, like, they, they do go into detail about pulse weapons, yeah. plasma weapons, and it's sweet. Like, it is cool. Um, and it is also pretty unique. I do like the uniqueness between all the races. Yeah. Right? Like, no one else has, like, ion and pulse stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's just cool. It, and it makes sense to me because they developed alone. Right? No one came and helped them. Like, the Eldar didn't, um, like, oh. Ion technology, they took from uh, the Demiurg. Really? Yeah. Yeah, no, like, they, they do take technology from people. Is it take? Or was that the, the Vespids? No. Uh, no, they use... The like, Vespids have the crystals. crystals. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. They... No, it's like equal trade. Like, you become... Right. It, you, they, you, they don't, do, you, you give what you can. Yeah, take implies force, but... Right. Yeah, they, it's not... They learned taken. it. Yeah. They learned it yeah, from... Yeah. I didn't know that it was from the Demiurg. Yeah. I don't really know anything about the Demiurg. I'm glad the one, the one example, they're like, oh, yeah, they, they did... It, it was ha- just, it, it happened, happened to be that. Yeah, because if you're like, oh, the pulse rifle technology. That like, was I theirs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one thing that was like, specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then probably the last thing is their lack of warp travel. They don't have real warp travel. And the key reason is because they don't have psychers. Yeah. So it's like they don't. It is interesting to me, though, um, that they can skim, which is technically touching a portion of the warp. Yeah. If not fully submerging in it. Um, but they haven't developed, like, a warp travel. But also, in their other races, like, yeah. there are highly psychic beings yeah. in the races that they've accepted into the fold. So I wonder when, like, when are they going to use that to their advantage? Um. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, it's weird that, like, because there are a bunch of these different minor races that have 
warp capability. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, maybe they're just like, you can't give warp technology to the Tau. You can, but the Tau still wouldn't be able to use li- utilize it because they don't have psychers. Uh, a lot of... I believe it's the Nikasars, yeah. but I could be wrong. But the Nikasars are a highly psychic race. Is yeah, that, they okay. Are. So yeah. they actually pilot ships for the Tau. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's odd. It, that it is odd that they, they're they like don't have their expeditionary travel. fleets don't. If, if I could make, there's only a couple things that I'd be really passionate about in 40k, like that Games Workshop should change. Yeah. First of all, um, they should give Tau uh, warp technology. Like, yeah. the ability for Tau to be all across the galaxy. I know they slightly are trying to uh, modify this with the Great Rift and then a whole bunch of Tau were lost and now could be all across the galaxy now, potentially. Yeah. But just give them warp technology somehow. It, like, it's even not unfeasible. The, yeah, like, and even, like, don't give Tau directly, but, like, even the Neskar, like, make them a bigger faction or a bigger... Uh, contributor contributor mm-hmm. to actually give Tau the ability to be a galaxy wide present because like we're talking like oh yeah the the Tau now have eight star systems so yeah like it's remember not that when we were much. talking about like it's not uh, even a full segment yeah blowing up like a million forty sectors yeah and the Imperium still fine yeah, yeah like you know what I mean like Tau it's a, are sweet it's a small and I, scale yeah and I love Tau but they're just not a galactic player. And that's it, one of the few things that I would like actively want Games Workshop to change. Yeah. And yeah. they totally could be. I, I agree too. I was thinking about that after as I was reading about them. Yeah, like it's just because they're sweet. They're yeah. awesome. Like, yeah, they're but, really uh, cool. Yeah, they need something. They need a, an event of some sort. Yeah. And and I mean they don't have their eighth out yet. No, they don't. So, so that, it, it is conceivable that a lot will change between yeah. from the seventh to the eighth edition. Yeah, which I'm hoping for. Yeah, it'll, I, I'm totally looking for like new ships and something because the Tau like they have crazy cool like ships and yeah. Like, that's tanks the thing. And, if you could speculate, what what do you think it would be that would be that would be their thing? You know, to make them galactic players. Well, they have introduced like a couple like super heavy battle suits. Like in the seventh, from like the sixth to the seventh, or from their most recent, and and that was cool to me is that like they have to like keep pace with the other like machina- machinations of like the other races, mm. so they develop more and more and more powerful. But like there comes a point where now they're gonna have to develop a way to transfer like supplies and troops from one sept to the other yeah. in order to just protect themselves. Yeah. So Games Workshop. Uh, the biggest thing that they've done is like they ripped the galaxy in half with that warp rift, right? And they lost the Tau lost an entire force sphere of expansion in this warp rift, so like they could end up across the entire galaxy now, and I think that's kind of the route they're gonna take. So, but if it was up to me, how I would make them a galactic player is I would just yeah implement like the Neskar or like even Crute have warp capability, and they just start. Bird people. Bird people. Like, <laughs> you know, like, they have a bunch of these races, and it would just be such an easy thing mm. to not even, like, you don't even have to say, well, now Tower Psychic. Like, they right. just, now, the, the, they have a crew on every ship that is running their warp for them. Like, it's an easy change. Yeah. Doesn't really break any of their established <coughs> lore yet. Or or even just claim that they're able to, uh, technologically, like, they, they reverse engineer, like, warp travel from, but, like, a crew. But... The it's the technology isn't what limits them. It's the fact that they don't have psychers, so they can't navigate in the warp, and they can't keep themselves like safe in the warp. If, it is more what it comes down to okay. in my mind. But if they were able to boil it down to more of a science, yeah, would you really need a navigator, or could you scientifically say like I am going to plot my course from here to here, and yeah. I can read the currents in the warp through this machine? Yeah, so they could do that, but then it it kind of takes away of like the deadliness of the warp. It does, like yeah, so the unpredictability. Me, yeah, of to it. me, it kind of takes away this awesome factor of warp travel. You know, mm-hmm. if they're just the like, danger. well, we just technologically avoid that. You know, it's kind of like yeah. it would be very unique because it would yeah, give safe would. warp travel. Yeah. 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 If they, they did, did accomplish that, though, that would be huge. They, yeah, that'd be. But they also like that would make them a galaxy player for sure. But their race is also small and short lived, mm-hmm. so there there are limitations on them just because of that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tau. 
I like they're cool. The battle suits are sweet. Yeah, I, I love battle suits. They um their army like the fire warriors have like two modes of like tactics. One is like an ambush, and one, one is like and then one's yeah the like kayom or something. Yeah. And it's kind of cool, like, everything that they do is, like, centered around these things, mm-hmm. and they employ the battle suits, like, specifically for these purposes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. They and also... Like, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and, like, where you look at the Imperial Army, it's like, you got Space Marines, they're doing their thing. You got Imperial Guards, they're doing... You got all these different factions doing their thing. Having their own... Yeah, where the Tau yeah. is, the Fire Warriors are their thing, like... They're all working in in unison together, where that those battle suits are directly coordinating with those fire warriors, you know, yeah. and it's all a unified force. Where right. uh, it's yeah, yeah. There, I also was reading that um, they and the Kayom, yeah, they use like a, a lure. It's like an ambush. Like they set like a trap for you. You go take it. And but what they do consistently use as a lure, the other races. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Yes, they consistently <laughs> will use the other races as like bait, which is so that leads perfectly into our tales of the war. <laughs> no, we're not done talking languages. I want to just oh, the names. okay, okay. Yeah. you win this round. Eric, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm really trying to just tease it out. Apparently, there. <laughs> uh, but the... you guys now know what my sex life is like. Just a little tease on. Yeah, I'm in there. <laughs> There's no no subtlety. No. <laughs> yeah, she Real takes off so her. Uncomfortable. She takes off her sock, and that's all. That's all. Oh I my need. gosh. I'm not even a foot guy. I just. Oh my gosh. Anywho, okay, keep teasing, Eric. Keep um, teasing. No, the names of a town. Yeah, yeah. Are r- unique, and they're pretty cool. Yeah, like you can. You can get, like, where a Tau is from, their role, their... Yeah, um, so the way it's broken down is, like, the first thing in a person's name is their cast. And then after that, so, like, each cast has a different word. Like, shas is fire. Kor, I believe, is air. And they each have their own thing. Un is ethereal. After that, they have their rank within the cast. The easiest is fire warriors, because it's, like, if you're a shas la... You're just like a basic foot foot soldier. If you're a chasse you, you're like a sergeant or a veteran. If you're a chasse veer, then you're a veteran. If you're, you know, and they go up the scale. Mm-hmm. Right. There, um, uh, I, there was a table I found on Lexicanum that I really want to find. Yeah. Well, find it and I'll keep talking. Yeah. So that's the first portion of their name. It's their, their cast and their, their rank within the cast. Mm-hmm. The next part of their name is what planet or ste- step they hail from. So if you hail from planet Tau, your name, and you're an ethereal, your name would be like Unyu Tau. Yes. Uh, if you're a fire warrior from Valora, it'd be Shasla Valora. And then the final part of your name is personal accomplishments. And uh, I don't know why I keep going back to burger flick- flipping. <laughs> but, uh, if you're a seven-year vet at McDonald's... Oh, you, boy. Who do we know did that? <laughs> uh, then, you know, you get, like, Shasla Valor Burger Flipper. You know, and you get, like, these honorary names depending on yeah. what you've accomplished in, you know, in your life. And yeah. you can have multiple honorary names. Yeah. Like, Commander Farside, I think, has, like, six... Oh, really? Six names or something like this. Yeah, oh, it's long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shova is Farsight, v- Case, I believe, is Skilled, and then Mantra, I'm not sure what that one is, but... Yeah, they're, they're long names, but uh, there's there's a table, if you search up, like, cast system on Lexicanum, yeah. there's a really cool table that shows, like, the cast, and then the rank that they'd have. So, like, the lowest fire warrior would be a Shas Sal, so that is a, a fire underling. How do you spell that? S A A L. Oh, I've yeah, never that's like that their trainee before. rank. Okay, that wouldn't even be like mili- That's like uh, yeah, it's when uh, you're just underling, yeah, yeah, an okay, underling, yeah. and then it goes okay, all the yeah, way up. So to that the... yeah, that's why I've never heard it because on tabletop that isn't a thing. Yeah, because cause they wouldn't be there. They, yeah, right. exactly. Okay, yeah. no, that's and cool. then it goes all the way up to the chasse O, but in the in the middle there's chasse La, chasse Yui, chasse Free, like all the way up, and it's really cool because you're able to determine exactly like what someone's rank is. Just by their name. Yeah, it is cool. And then what's cool is the ethereals, like their titles, like go from Lord, Prince, Prelate, King, Holy Ones, and then an on O, 
would be like the highest of the holy. Yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a cool way to do it. So yeah, like it's like it's when, a built system. It has yeah. logic behind the language. Yeah. Um and then uh yeah, like when you're talking like if a fireware is talking to a fireware, they're not like Shasla Valora blah 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 blah. Right. They they're just saying like farsight. You know, to uh, each not other. necessarily. Actually. In, in, if they're of equal equal rank, I heard it, or, it more has to do with um, like the bonding ceremony. Like you'll, yeah, for like, the most part, you only use personal names. Did we talk about the bonding after ceremony? the Talisera? No, we can though. Yeah, yeah. So you, you are right. Like if you know somebody, you're not like I don't always call you Eric middle name last name. <laughs> right. I just call you middle name or your whatever your name <laughs> middle is. Middle name. I don't know. <laughs> What's I mean, my name? I don't I fucking know. No. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're right. Like, and then like the only person that calls me like my full name would be like my mom, when she's mad at you. Right. Yeah. Which is all the time. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there is like there's that. But it's also like respect wise. Like, yeah. sure, I know your rank, but yeah. we're equals. Yeah. So, uh, you want to talk about the bonding ritual? Do you know much? Uh, I, 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 I mean, you could probably um, say more about it. But it, it is cool. A, I think. I don't think cool. there's a whole bunch to say. So just tell us. What do you like about the bonding ritual, Rio? I don't know. I, I just think it's a cool part of their culture. Like, it, it kind of it kind of um, symbolizes their, you know, their philosophy, you know, being lived out, right? Yeah, everyone's equal and everyone's getting the same cut to show that you're all, like, working together. Or, yeah. yeah. So so basically, they have ceremonial knives, right? Called, yeah. They're called the, bonding knives? Yeah. Yeah. The only knives in the entire <laughs> Tao society. Yeah. Yeah, and they they basically cut themselves, right? And yeah, yeah, like yeah. They, they they shed blood. Yeah, yeah. And it's like uh, showing that they're willing to like sacrifice for each other. Yeah, yeah. for the greater good. You know? Yes. And, and mostly fire warriors do this, but other castes do do this as well. Yeah. It, it is also very ceremonial. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and then also the idea is that you've done this with someone, and then you carry the blade with yeah. you. It's like a sign of that you've done it. Right, and mm-hmm. that you have bled, and yeah. you're willing to bleed again. Uh, it also said uh, when like there's battle suits and they do it, they yeah. don't really carry the blade; they just paint it on their armor. Yeah, yeah. So that could be an, a, a cool distinction, especially when you're painting models. Like you have like a certain like a unit of like battle suits, and you paint the knife on them. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. But it's called the Talosera, and it's more like it seems more important than like marriage, really. Like between, because I, I don't. I don't know if Tao do marry actually. I, yeah, I, I didn't really do. find anything, but they um, did say like that. This is like the most you could do for someone. Like it's yeah, M- marriage isn't really the greater good. Like no, you're <laughs> if anything, down. procreation is the greater good. Yeah, so I don't. Yeah, you'd almost do think good. marriage like would be antithetical because then right. you're loyal to like your family. Yeah, and then, then more loyal to your family than you are to the greater yeah. good. Yeah, and then let's say you have like this really potent male. And then, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, the female gets crippled during war, but now that male's still tied to that female who can no longer conceive. That's not right. for the greater good. So right. I'm going to say that marriage is probably not a thing in the Tao Empire. Yeah, and then it's just the Ta Lysera. Like, that shows their, like, respect towards each other. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. And uh, that's one neat thing, too, about... Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? One neat thing about fire warriors is that male and female both go to war. Yeah. There's no distinction. There's between, no distinction. Like, like, their bodies are bred for war. Like, they're, they're equal in that sense. Like, either one can fight. And yeah, I have yet to see anything in here that dis- makes a distinction between gender. Yeah, like, because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, like... Yeah. The females are just as represented as the males yeah, are. It's and then once you have a helmet on, you can't even tell the difference yeah, between exactly. male and female. Especially if you you know, you have people complaining about boob plate, then uh, it really doesn't matter because you're not getting them a boob plate and they're all wearing helmets. So right. for all anyone cares, everyone's a female. Now, the interesting thing here is that if you were to try and create like a cadre, a yeah. cadre, which yeah. is like a group of... Cadre. Yeah. Cadre? Is it cadre? I think it's cadre. Okay. Yeah. If you're trying to create a cadre, which is what's considered like a commander would have command over a cadre. Yeah, it would be like the equivalent of like an Imperial Guard regiment. Or... Right, exactly. It has like a bunch of different parts to it. You yeah. know, you've got your battle suits, you've got your fire warriors, you've got your air support. Yeah. But in that, you were you could conceivably and should claim yeah. that half are female and half are male. Yeah. Right, but to say that, uh, well, actually, I wouldn't say that. I Why would not? say two thirds are male, one third is female. Why would you say that? Just because women have to give birth, 
So that well, does we, I don't know how the cow give birth. I don't know either, but like you could, cons- most you could conceive things- it through. You guys should stop assuming their gender gestation period. <laughs> you could. I, you I could would assume, assume that there would be some da- downtime though, just yeah. for giving birth and pregnancy. And, and stuff. because the cow have such a short lifespan, it could be that it's like get the babies out there. Yeah, who knows? Right. I don't, I don't yeah. think they've really clarified. But to claim but that it's like all male or all female would be no. lorically false. No, like the only thing that is all male in the galaxy and will stay that way for all time. Yeah. Yeah, Space Marines. Ex- um, Astartes. Yeah, you know, of course. Because they're... Most excellent. <laughs> most excellent all things. Okay, anywho. Yeah. I, Eric doesn't like me now. He's pissed. No, no, I'm not upset at all. <laughs> I'm not upset. This is not... This is hardly the first time Mark and I have talked about the gender of Space Marines <laughs> and what's currently kind of going on behind the scenes in GW. So, <sighs> yeah. Just... GW, if you're listening, support the fans that actually support you. That's all was, I'm saying. I was actually doing like some reading on Twitter, um, because Mark and I were talking about it, and this is an aside, but like we we were talking about like what happens when female space marines become a thing, and I was like, well, like it's what the fans want, because that's was my understanding, and Mark's like, well, no, like go actually look and read that, like look at the number of people who want females versus males, and it does seem like more people voice for males. <laughs> Yeah. Like, which was it's surprising thing, to like, me, but it does seem that, like, the voices that are... The loudest are always the most not annoying. Even, not even most... <laughs> no. What I meant was the voices that have the most pull. Like, we're talking, like, authors of GW are yeah. the ones advocating for female space marines. Which well, would, okay, so, first of all, no one's ever in Games Workshop has ever said anything about female space right, marines. Right, yeah. They've first just said all, more representation. Exactly. Which, which I'm all for. Like, I would love if they came out with a like a fire warrior upgrade kit where you can buy female, female heads heads that's all you need to do yeah just a blister pack of female heads boom that would be sweet like it just adds another yeah. element to your army yeah yeah same with fem- female guardsmen and whatever the this Val is a Hallens huge and yeah like, let's, let's huge, save this yeah let's save it because oh, it is, but, it but is, i guess i think for me the thing is is like if they're doing it to enhance the story and make the or make the universe better, then I'm all for it. But if yeah. they're doing it for like ideological reasons, because it's like the flavor of the month to, then no, to have female, re- yeah, then it's just like yeah. that's retarded. You're not actually doing anything. Yeah, but like <laughs> so, female fire warriors. That's yeah. a thing. Like their and main leader right been. now yeah, yeah, yeah. is is a woman yeah, and yeah. has been for ten years. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it is a part of the lore. Same with like Imperial Guardsmen. Yeah, she's like she is the number one tactician over the entire Tau Empire. Yeah, and like there's that's sweet, sure. By all means, like it doesn't take away from the lore. It doesn't. It adds to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, But yeah, I know what you're saying. Like the and once again, the only thing is if they did female Space Marines. Yeah, that's the only thing they can't do and shouldn't. I agree. I agree because it's been so built into the into the ethos of what like a Space Marine is. Yeah, like. I don't know. I think it is kind of silly to make them. Yeah. And you you know people are just doing it just for like uh like yeah. a cultural thing. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like it, it, and that just, that doesn't exist in the Warhammer universe. Yeah, like right. <laughs> I, I make this one quote in the grim darkness of the far future. There is only equality. <laughs> it's like, no, there's only war and genocide yeah, and yeah, hatred and yeah. xenophobia. Like yeah, yeah. this is not a good place to live. Totally. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it is it is definitely a, a topic like for almost an entire you know, episode. You know what we should do? We should do an episode, label it trigger warning, <laughs> just, just so I can rat. Like, if you don't want to hear my misogynistic views, <laughs> SJWs and the Warhammer. Just 40K ignore that universe. episode. That way, we won't lose any people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just don't listen to it. I yeah. love females. I love my wife when. <laughs> it sounds like it, especially when you just one sock off and you're ready to go. Right? I love women. Sounds They're like awesome. you respect her a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But it is it is a good topic. It's good discussion yeah. to have. Um unfortunately now is not the time, even though it's like right on everyone's lips right now. Everyone's talking about it. I know. So it would be worth like a separate episode. Would uh, you would, would should we? Okay. Yeah. That's I'm, all I meant. I am then. more than willing to do that with you. Okay. We should get Christian in on that one he, too. Yeah, he wants to. Yeah. yeah. Um but, but as of this point, I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's anything else I'd like to add in for Tau when it comes to lore. I think this episode's been a pretty good uh, tangent episode. It we've has. got like <laughs> we've gone off Yellowstone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys want to do Yellowstone? You guys want to do a Yellowstone episode? <laughs> it's so cool. And like the thoughts of what would happen if it actually exploded. Oh man! Like we're dead. 
Like yeah. we live we live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, um, which is like the dumping ground for oil insults. Apparently, everyone <laughs> yeah. just loves to paint us as like evil oil mongers. Stop driving your car, bitches! <laughs> <laughs> Stop using your Tupperware, which is made yeah. from plastic. Mm-hmm. Like. Get out of your canoes, yeah. which are made from plastic. Anyway, or, or yeah, or stop buying like petroleum products that are produced yeah. by like dictators in the Middle East, right? Exactly, <laughs> and Anyways, South America. But <laughs> um, besides all that, like, another tangent. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Yellowstone explodes, we die almost yeah. instantly. Perfect. It's, it's so cool. Anyway, so. Yeah, I won't have to go to work on Monday. Then. Right, exactly. <laughs> yes. Are you gonna try and make like a work joke at least once? Well, I episode? have to now. Yeah, yeah. It's the- your, it's your bit. <laughs> it's your thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's your what, what? What's up, Willis? Um, okay. Well, with that being said, uh, like Mark, is there anything else you want to add about the Tau? Something you feel we missed or didn't expand upon enough? No. Um, space communism. What's not to like? <laughs> yeah. Real. I like it. I'm I'm always down for space comedy. Yeah, so like uh, when you have I always say better dead than red, but that's just (laughs) (laughs) You fit right in with humanity, Jordan. (laughs) I think I do. (laughs) That's funny. Uh, I know for you, Rio, when you do very rarely play 40k with us, you do play the Tau army that I have, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there is something that it just, the, the aesthetics of them, it looks sweet, like. It does, yeah, yeah. And then the lore, obviously, yeah. is pretty sweet to learn about. And too. also, they play a lot different than other armies because they're almost exclusively long range, right? Yeah, like, so even like their most melee oriented guys, which are the Kroot, suck. Yeah, they're not they're good. They're not good. Like, no, yeah. they're, they're not going to beat Acadian, really. They, they actually will statistically, but not by much. Like, it could go and, either way. Yeah. Like, but, they're, and their tech just is it's built on long range. Yeah, like, yeah. and, and it, it is a unique faction where everyone else is wielding these giant chain swords and being all rowdy and just trying to get gore splattered all over <laughs> yeah, themselves. Like, yeah, no, they're they're, they're fun to play because you you know you're kind of trying to you know spread them out and then you know catch everybody else in a cross. Pincer move, yeah, force exactly. them out. Yeah, it tactic, was tactic, tactic, tactics. Well, that's yeah, and that's part of like what's built into the Tau. And yeah. I also did read an interesting thing is that the Tau have no desire to hold ground. Their only purpose is, like, if it's an enemy, seek it out and destroy it. Yeah. There's no reason to hold and, like, try and, like, hold a defensible position. It's like, we have superior technology. Take advantage of it and just destroy your enemies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read that their war tactics are based on their uh, their hunting, like, from, from... From way back when? From way back yeah. when they were planes, you know, planes yeah. people and stuff like that, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It just shows that, like, like the entire society, it seems, like has stayed strong together for this entire period of time. Mm-hmm. So, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. It's nice that some people can get along. It's not for me personally, <laughs> but... <laughs> but it's good that someone can. Yeah. All right. Uh, then I guess, without much further ado, let's step into the tales from the warp. Ethereals. Let's uh, talk about what they do, what they don't do, what we speculate on them... Um, and this is this is the probably the part where it's going to take the brightness of Tau and like the greater good, and it's going to kind of topple it a little bit. How dare you? It'll put some doubt in your mind. <laughs> it should put some doubt. You should question <laughs> your leaders. How dare you question anything the Ethereals do? They have nothing but the best intentions. <laughs> exactly. For us. I love that you're brainwashed, Marcus. <laughs> Uh, but it is it. This is a topic worthy of discussion. Yeah, because they have this control over the rest of them, and it's not quite sure where it comes from. Yeah, and this is like the thing is so the the main topic is like how how do the ethereals actually exercise this crazy amount of control over this you know star system spanning empire? Just this few, this small cast. And they make all the decisions. It's unquestioned. Like, it's loyalty to the point of death and sacrifice. So how do they do it? Just politeness. They're just really nice guys. Yeah, like, they're just like, can you please go die on that planet for me? <laughs> it would mean a lot to me. And the, and the like, fire warrior goes, yes, since sir. Since you asked nicely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I think that, um, like, A, it's 40K. Nothing in it is good and pure. No, goodness, no. <laughs> uh, so There's only a quality in 40K. We know this. Right, exactly. 
but nothing in it like is good. Yeah, there's everything always, always has some twisted background, some to kind it. of undertone in yeah. it, some kind of malevolent thing. Yeah, because like there's just it's impossible. Like, just people get in the way and chaos gets in the way. And, yeah, you know, personal greed and ambition, and maybe. There is, uh, I guess I'll say this as a, discla- as a disclaimer, it is completely possible that the greater good is actually the greater good and the Tao only follow the ethereals just because they believe in the greater good. Yeah. That, that is completely possible. Yeah. But I don't believe it. Yeah. There has to be something else going on. So let's start with um, what could be a scientific explanation of it. And okay. that's that organ. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So the ethereals, like, in that slit, they actually have, like, an organ up there, uh, which every time that, like, a human scientist has ever, like, done, like, a biopsy on, like, one of these ethereals, it's benign. So it doesn't do anything, like, uh, apparently. But yeah. there's also the thought that maybe the ethereals they're getting are duds. Yeah. So, like, the organ, like, isn't working at capacity, or they somehow have the ability to, like, remove its function, like, at death, so that no one else can find out what it is or what it does. Yeah. But there is speculation that one what, of the scientific Did we reasons, say what that was called? The organ? Yeah. I don't think it has a name. I thought okay. it was called, like, the quarrel? No, that's the race that they think it... Uh, oh, um, okay, sorry. Yeah. So, one of the ways that the scientists think it might function is that they are exuding, like, they're excreting a pheromone yeah. through this organ, which is similar to what the coral do. So, the coral are a race that um, they communicate through pheromone. Okay. So, they, like, send it out and it tells, like, hey, there's this good planet for eating over here, and this chick is hot. You should go sleep with her. She's good lay and stuff <laughs> like that. Huh. <laughs> it's Market's pheromone. <laughs> that's how. That's all they talk about. I swear. Interesting. Uh, so then, there's speculation that maybe this um, organ actually just gets out a pheromone that just mind alters, like the like the a Tao's ability to like function and make decisions for themselves and makes them compliant. Yeah. Right. Because it is it is odd when you read Lexicanum. The number of times you'll find that someone like in the articles, it will say. If an ethereal ever told a Tao to kill itself, they would do it unquestioningly and with, you know, instantly. And yeah. It, it is like, I'm and, reading and page after page, it is on every page. Like, yeah. they stress this fact. And, and that could be one of two things. It could be literally, like, the, cow, the Tao will do that. Or it could be, like, uh, more of, like, a metaphor, almost. Like, um, they tell the fire warrior to go die on that planet, like for the greater good and the right. tower will happily do it and it's not so much like go shank yourself in the neck yeah it's more go sacrifice yourself for the greater good right so it could be one of these two reasons yeah. but most likely it's it's more that pheromonal control potentially right yeah like, the thing is every Tao obviously would kill themselves in a battle scenario for the ethereal yeah. and that would be like the only way i could see an ethereal asking the question is please go sacrifice yourself for the planet but if an ethereal ever did go on a power trip and ask a Tau to kill themselves by shooting themselves in the head, yeah. do they do it? Maybe. I, like, the so, only evidence I have in front of me says yes, yeah. they do it. So then yeah. it's like, yeah. why? Yeah, so... Why would they do that? That pheromone could be, could be a powerful thing. Yeah. And that could be maybe it. Yeah, it, it could be that it just uh, alters everyone around them. When the ethereals came, they were described coming in on lights. Bright lights, yeah. Bright lights, which could be, you know, UFOs or whatever. Like, the the coral could have taken the ethereals, give them that, that organ, and brought them back to the planet. Yeah. Why? Who, Who knows? knows? Um, yeah, that's what I was wondering. So, were the when the ethereals came, yeah, were they? Because they weren't they weren't there from the beginning, right? They weren't no. one of the four original. You know, kind of. Uh, no, they weren't. Right they now. appeared <laughs> in the Montau. Yeah. 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 So were they maybe genetically engineered by another species? So you think there that is definitely possible. Um, this is all speculation at this point. So it could be like a deliberate genetic engineering on like the ethereal's part. Maybe like at some point, like they had alien contact because humans contacted them way long ago. Yep. Maybe some were taken off planet yep. for some reason. Oh, and yeah. then the ethereals kind of learned like, 
it's not just us, you know, we're not alone. And then that's where they, you know, gain this extra organ or over the next thousand years, they change and adapt. Yeah. And they get all this wisdom. So that is a possibility. For yeah. The ethereals. Another one could be that they have psychic abilities. Yeah. They're like the only Tao. Yeah. That has any kind of psychic connection. And that's much more sinister. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because with the whole pheromone thing, they might not actually be aware of it themselves. Right. It could just be like, everyone listens to me when I talk. So obviously yeah, like, I'm going to tell everyone what to do. Cause and, I, and this is my place in society now. Like Exactly. Yeah. It's more of like, a, we don't understand why, but I will use this, you know, this is where I fit in yeah. society. I yeah. fit because people tell me, listen, when I tell them where, what to do. Where if it's a psychic thing and they tell a Tao to go kill himself, like he is actively like making the Tao do right. it. Also it's if, mind control. Also, if they were psychic too, they they could be uh, susceptible to chaos, right? Right. Yeah. 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 It's a two-way street. Yeah. Like if you use it, it can use you. So that and that is like a much darker look at it because you have this entire race that claims to be doing something for the greater good, and it's like, but actually, they're just as twisted as everyone else is, and they've fooled an entire empire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Into believing that what they're doing is like for the good of the people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another thing that it could be too is uh just the common Tao's fear of the Monta Montau. Yeah. Um, so they they listen to the to the Ethereals unquestionably because the Ethereal saved them way back then. And now it's like, well, the Ethereal must know what they're talking about. Like, I gotta listen to them, otherwise like bad things are gonna happen. So he yeah. tells me to go shoot myself, I'm gonna go do it because there has to be a re- like, if I don't, are we all gonna fall back into Montau? Right. Like, and it could be like this, like over the centuries and millennia, this like inbred fear that just like they're just so deathly afraid of that happening, and yeah. that's why they follow it. Yeah. Um. Could it be respect? I you. <laughs> you know, it's possible. It is. Anything is possible. Like I don't it, like it, but I don't. I don't like. I don't believe that anyone, like, is capable of viewing themselves. I don't. Okay, maybe one person. One person absolutely is capable of saying like, I'm willing to sacrifice everything I am for this. But the whole an race? entire species. Yeah. And now you have all these races that don't think like Tao. Yeah. That are also willing to accept this. Hmm. That seems odd. Well, so then that would give credence to psychic potential because the pheromones wouldn't necessarily work on ra- other races. Yeah, and but not psychic- everyone ex- comes into the greater good. So that's what you could say, like, the pheromones aren't strong enough to accept some people. Yeah. So you could say some people have, like, a lower tolerance to this than others. Yeah. Because some humans actually go into the fold. But you don't. can follow their logical pro- progression why they sure. join. Like, it's not like... It's not like a Tao's walking on the battlefield and like, and then the people are you like, you know, pointing at like different Xenos and yeah. like, now you do this. Like, it's not <laughs> yeah. like, it's not I'm like just that. Picturing them like you, you're you're making that walking motion. I just picture like a Tao like striding down the battlefield. Hate is gonna like, hate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that walk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So it could be could be psychic that they are like actually psychically and like controlling all these other races and the Tao themselves. Yeah could be there's um <clears throat> there's a couple things like i, I want to share kind of that really paints the picture of the greater good not actually being as good as what we claim yeah like it could all be just propaganda yeah like a massive sham yeah communist loves propaganda mm-hmm. <laughs> it's one of their things so yeah um everything's all well and good so we we mentioned before about the pock troons which is the actual very first race that the Tao uh, folded in to the Empire. Um, and we said they didn't last that long. Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> the reason being is that there was a plague or a disease that after the Tao accepted them into their fold, uh, this disease ravaged the Pactruns and eliminated Wiped them. Wiped out the entire race. As a race, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. And then the tower like, oh well, and they inhabit their world. Side conspiracy. Coin, coin side A, it was just an unfortunate occurrence. Yeah, because like, if an alien microbe came onto our planet, it could release something it crazy. It absolutely could we and might kill not, all of us. Yeah, and it's totally unintentional. Yeah. Well, even uh, like the 
if you think uh when all the settlers came from europe they like wiped out the indigenous populations because of diseases yeah like yeah. But some of that was intentional no smallpox blankets oh yeah but some of it came from like rodents and vermin right and but yeah. also some of it was deliberate okay yeah yeah but Probably not most of it. Right. The but. initial, like, us bringing the... That. But you you could conceive that, like, those people wouldn't have the same, like, adaptations that people yeah, in Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's definitely a possibility. Yeah. But... Side B of the coin. The, the thing is, like, they have technology. Yeah. Yeah, so they, right? they like, are a spacefaring race. They've able to cross systems like yeah how how have they not prepared for that eventuality oh and, yeah how do they not have medical sciences to it do was it? after they were folded in they already had had a bunch of contact with this alien species before this happened yeah because i guess it's not like you meet the planet and, and then, then the next like, day yeah like no it's probably years. years of talks and yeah of negotiating with these people like bringing you into the greater first good. of all even just trying to understand them exactly like, so this verbally. is not a, this is not quick that the, they would have and, and diseases are rampant right mm-hmm. like they they go and they just take so this it's more of like it seems like a tragedy when i hear about it but it's like where did this come from so side b of the coin is that the tau did it <laughs> like they accepted this race into their fold they get yeah. on their planet they take all the good things that they like from these people yeah and then they wipe them out they release <laughs> like, yeah, like using like uh, biological, biological warfare. warfare. Yeah, yeah. Like they release a disease that they engineer. Yeah. That completely destroys this race and leaves the tower untouched, and the tower free to take their planet. Yeah. And it could be for the greater good. So. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what if they thought the Pokshroons could eventually evolve into something yeah. that um, you know is is dangerous or, or bad for the greater good or yeah. something. And at this point, too, it's the first alien race it is they've the first come. One. So it's like they could think like, oh, this is like the only other alien race out there. If we eliminate it, like the galaxy's ours. Right. But then they keep running into more and more and more. And that's why they're not just like yeah. biological weaponing everyone because then they kind of realize. It's like, also difficult to do that to a race that's already galaxy spanning. Yeah. Because then you'd have to hunt down yeah. the race. Whereas this Pactroon, it was just on one planet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's like if you believe that it was just a coincidence and a you know just a tragedy that's one thing then you're a fool but it (laughs) it like i could conceivably see this as a targeted attack yeah yeah like that that right there shows that is not that is not nearly the peace loving tau yeah that like is kind of painted (laughs) yeah in the codex yeah (laughs) like especially after they had been accepted yeah yeah I, I don't know. I personally still think it could have easily been an accident. It could have been. Absolutely. Like You kind of think... Yeah, my only counter to that would be, like, is there any evidence that the, that the Tau, like, tried to reverse the disease or cure the disease? Is there any evidence that, like, they tried to do something that would have tried to save this race of people because if not i would almost lean towards a theory that it it was more intentional yeah like i i think there's really only the one sentence on the pock and yeah. that's that like they it was the first aliens that they contacted yeah uh they got him into the fold and then they died of the disease yeah like, uh, i think it's only that yeah all it says is they were xeno you know, species for me the first sentient race to join the tau however within a few generations <laughs> generations yeah. yeah. So they had time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disease destroyed the indigenous population. The Tau, who were immune to the plague, inherited their home world. <laughs> yeah. Seems pretty sketchy. Seems pretty sketchy. I don't sketchy. know. I don't think you can trust a space commie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. So it it does seem a little bit coincidental. And at yeah. this point, like, they're listening to the ethereals. The ethereals are the ones calling the shots on yeah. everything. Yeah. Right? So that was that is my point number one. Of town not being of, good. Of yeah, of there being a sinister force lurking behind this. Yeah. And not nearly as accepting as they are. Point number two. The Vespid uh species is an insect like race. And um, the Tau encountered them, and they tried to make communication with them. But the water cast, for however long they spent, because they're the ambassadors yeah. of the people, they they couldn't do it. They could not communicate with this like buzzing insect race. Yeah. 
uh, the ethereals step in, give them communication helmets, headsets, <laughs> yeah, and instantly these bugs are compliant and part of the fold. Yeah, and it's not like, okay, now we can understand each other. Now let's work on a piece. Right. It's no, like, it's it says instantly yeah. they become compliant. Strange. It is it's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like you know, I'm not saying that it, it's it's direct evidence. I'm saying we should be wary of joining the commies. Don't put any <laughs> helmet on that they give you. No, exactly. That's what it is. Like, it's, oh, it's a gift. You know, it'll help us communicate. No, you lose your ability to make the decisions as soon as you put this helmet on. It's, yeah. it's stocked with the pheromones or it's like a psychic receptor that makes you more susceptible to like the ethereals It could manipulation. even be just straight technology too. Like Absolutely. Like a brain tap thing. That Yeah, it's like the Angron spike taps, you know. Sure. It, it's a lobotomy. Sure, it could be. Right? Probably like, no. Well, no, not an insect brain. <laughs> but, like, all I'm saying is that's number two. Like, the ethereals <laughs> are not... Maybe they are not as benevolent as, like, the greater good that idea would have Propaganda. you believe. Third, third argument, Farsight. Yeah, as soon as the ethereals in Farsight's uh, hunter cadre or yeah. sphere of expansion die... He he does something that no Completely other town unexpected. does, and he starts his own thing separate from the greater good. Right. So it's like okay, so the psychic link between them is broken. He can see clearly now. He's like, whoa, that's not good. Right. He creates his own empire. Exactly. Like so, he's he's kind of like he's under the con- not control, but he is listening to the ethereals. Like they are directing his path. He's determining how they take the steps. Right? Like, he's commanding the war, but you always have the ethereal watching your back. Yeah. And, like, kind of guiding you. Yeah. So then, all of a sudden, his ethereals die. A regular Tau is expected of them to go back to the Empire to get new ethereals. Yeah. But, like, he already knows what his goal is. Yeah. He's, why does he's he, why does pushing he have the sphere to have, of expansion. Like, yeah, why does he have to have an ethereal? Like, is, is he incapable of making decisions? No. He's the leader of the entire expedition. Yeah, he's a brilliant tactician. Like, he doesn't need an ethereal there to tell him exactly. how to run a war. Yeah. Like, ooh, like, tell your guys to shoot that. Like, I'm the tactician. Like, give it a break, ethereal. <laughs> so then what, what happened to him from when his ethereals died that he realized, I need, like, to step out? Yeah. This right. So that is also like an interesting. I thought you said before though that he was doubting even before that. He was. He was. There was when he was fighting. Um, there were a, there was a portion of time where he was watching his soldiers die, and he felt like it was in vain. He's like, this isn't worth it. Like, how can this? How can the sacrifice of my soldiers be for the greater good? Like, when their life could have meant something, like, does their death really mean anything? Yeah. And another portion was uh, he was in a battle and he's requesting support for his troops because, like, you told me to go get this and we're losing, so send me reports. Uh, send me, jeez, reinforcements. reinforcements. I'll get, you know, eh. words, uh, right? It's... He's like, send me reinforcements so I can actually take this. And he's denied. And he's like, well, what am I supposed to, are my guys supposed to just die? And, like, you consider that for the greater good? Like, that's not good for them. Right? And so he he has these doubts, and all of a sudden his ethereals come. Like, maybe, it, to me, it shows that mental block. Right? Like, if it's a pheromone, like, you're, like a weak mind is susceptible. Yeah. If, it's, if it's the warp, a weak mind. So, like, if you want to believe it, why would your mind ever question it? Like, yeah. as a regular Tao, you want to believe that the greater good is for the greater good. Yeah. But when you already have those doubts in your mind and all of a sudden the blanket is lifted, yeah. like, you accept that reality instead of deny it. Like, a regular fire warrior would deny those thoughts and say, like, no, it's impossible. The greater good is the greater good. Yeah. But someone like him, he's more like, I have been having these thoughts and all of a sudden my mind is clear because the ethereals are gone and they're no longer bombarding me with their pheromones hmm. or with their psychic will and now i can think clearly for the first time think clearly and actually react yeah because now yeah. i don't have anyone telling me what to do like i'm the commander yeah. i know what's right yeah so hmm. i i see a lot of the tau empire being like starship troopers and like their propaganda videos that they have i never saw that oh okay have, have either of you guys no nope. yeah i've seen it yeah where it's like I, I don't know I don't remember I haven't seen the movie in a long time the exact quote but it's like it's always like join and you can see distant places and like yeah, yeah. all these like 
meet new life forms and it's like <laughs> happiness and stuff but really when they get to the front line it's like just crazy mm. but uh yeah i think that's pretty common like even like even when you look at our commercials for like joining the the armed forces <laughs> it's like see different it is honestly it's yeah. like see new places yeah. learn new yeah, skills yeah. but really it's like join our military yeah, <laughs> yeah. go shoot right. people right yeah so it, like propaganda is going to be there no matter what so then it's yeah. just it's a reinforcement so yeah and they're just constantly hearing like oh yeah we've taken this new planet the ethereals are great right you exactly know? it's like how much of this is being shoved down your throat and you're not being shown the other side yeah um i wonder too like if they they actively cover stuff up to like um what if someone wants to leave the empire yeah like they don't allow it like they they're they're watching Farsight and like making sure that he's contained and no one's allowed to go talk to him. No one's yeah. allowed in his area of space to go communicate with him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, what happens? So the humans, the Geve- Gevesa, yeah, right. So they they were like, oh man, I want to join the greater good. What happens if all of a sudden they're like, this isn't for me? Death, death. Like when when you are. In contact with the Tau, you have two options. Join them or die. Right. So if you join them, your life's going to be good, potentially. But if you don't, they're going to kill you. Like Right. Like that That doesn't seem like... Obvi- and Are they, though? Is there precedent for that? Yes. Yeah. Like they do claim like they're the first when when Tau first contact an alien race, the first thing they will do is always try and communicate with them. But if you repeatedly refuse their attempts at negotiation into the greater good... They will annihilate you. Yeah. Like the orcs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But just... like, even like, so let's say the Tau go to like a planet, they meet like this race that isn't really even space faring, or maybe they are, they're just solar system faring though. Sure. Like, they're not anything crazy. Like, the Tau could just leave them alone. Right. Like, the Tau don't need to wipe out that race if they don't want to join the good. But they do. Yeah, absolutely. Like. It's like with us or against us. Yeah. And like, that, it's, that shows a darker side than what I would assume the regular person knows about the greater good. Because yeah. I bet, like, in, like, the Earth cast, who primarily stay on, like, their already habited worlds, and um, probably to some lesser extent the water cast. Yeah. Like, because I would assume, like, the only people who have contact with, like, aggressive alien races is going to be fire and air and ethereal. Like, and, and water. And water, the I ambassadors, guess, yeah. to some degree. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the regular merchants? No. Probably not. No. Yeah, the bureaucrats... Yeah. But, like, are those guys just indoctrinated with the fact that, like, the greater good, like, everyone is accepted in the greater good and we, you know, we like all races. But that's not necessarily true. Like, if you don't join the greater good, you are branded as, like, an enemy. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and, like, part of it I, I get. Like, you need to protect your interests. But still, like, sometimes, like, back to that example, like, yeah. you could just leave that yeah, race they're alone not a threat on the planet. You. Like, do you really need to go mess up but i I think from the perspective of of the tau um like they advance so quickly so i think they could they realize that other races even if they aren't at that place at the moment that they could advance and be a threat in the future to the greater good yeah maybe that is a thing yeah if a culture is built entirely on peace but let's say they are uh xenophobic so they the tau reach a world where like there's no conflict or war on this entire planet but the people hate other races. They refuse to contact them. They refuse to deal with them. Um, they just deny them. They're like, like, don't land here. No one's going to talk to you. No one's going to trade with you. No, We don't want anything to do with you. We're just peaceful. The Tau can't stand for that. Like, they aren't accepted into the greater good, so they're enemies. Yeah. Like, that's a black mark, right? That's a red flag right yeah. there. It's sort of cultish almost. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Right, and like, depend, depending on your perspective of it, it would absolutely be. Like, you have the leader who's making all the decisions that people blindly follow. Mm-hmm. Communism. Okay, here, wait. <laughs> I'm going to play the devil's advocate yeah. for the greater good. So <laughs> I think, let's say that that ethereals do, they do manipulate people through pheromones, let's say. Yeah. Let's say they did kill the Pocturns and they do, you know, they do this other stuff, right? They, they did mind control the Vespids and that kind of stuff. So the, the, the ethereals, they kind of serve as kind of Plato's idea of philosopher kings, right? And ultimately, their philosophy is like complete utilitarianism, right? So, like, considering all of that, um, 
they're really just following their philosophy and they're pushing it because all of this could be actually for the greater good yes for for the like the galaxy yeah so okay. Like and it's if not you, malicious. No, so it's not actually malicious. Well, that's not necessarily true. Which part? It not being malicious. It absolutely is malicious, just because I don't agree with your philosophy. Is that no, worth yeah. killing me? Even if my philosophy might be more peaceful and more actually but for the But that is the good? philosophy. Is that it right. is that your death so, is for the greater for good. Y- so from your perspective, from yeah. the Tao's perspective, from a fire warrior who is raised in the greater good, yeah. he's doing the right thing. Yeah. From anyone outside looking in, it is a horrific crime. Right. Yeah, but like but so, this is the philosophy though. It but is, that's what I'm saying, is that yeah. the greater good isn't actually that good. But like okay, so it depends on perfect. whose perspective. And the perspective I'm looking at is the race that was just slaughtered because even though they were peaceful, they refused to come into the greater good because their idea is better. Yeah. But I, I would argue that um from the from even how they've kind of expanded and their history compared to, you know, the other races, it actually looks a lot better. Oh, even absolutely. Even for the humans, like they can still worship the emperor, they can still live their lives. Yeah. Like, like it, would it be so bad even coming under the the ethereals? It doesn't. I don't think so. No. I'd I, I'd almost rather be under the ethereals than the imperium. I would actually. You like if Kruvasa. you would if Kruvasa. If you would prefer to lose the individuality that you have and the ability to choose. Then yes, I mean I'm not saying there's a lot of that in the Imperium. In the Imperium, if you don't agree, I'd say you're there's more die. of that though in the Imperium. Mm-hmm. Like here, they let you worship in, in what their minds would be a false god. Yeah, like they they, they give you a, a fair amount of autonomy. Apparently. Yeah, like yeah. even like Crute, like they find Crute disgusting when they eat the flesh of the dead, but they allow them to do it, like because they realize that's their culture. Yeah, not the Tao. They don't allow Crute to eat Tao. Right, body. but that makes well, sense. Th- that yeah, like. like that makes sense. Yeah, it really does. And they would just like, get a taste for like, for Tao, which are their, you know, they're working with them. So yeah, it's like if I ate you, yeah, but like they don't care if cool they because we're friends. If they, I ate they Jordan, don't perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> like if if let's say in a hunter cadre, there's uh, some Tao contingents, Crute contingents, and Demiurg contingents or Vespids. Yeah. Like when the Vespids or Demiurg die, the Tao don't care if the Crute eat them. Well, that's probably between the crude and the... Right, but yeah. how, like, that shows me the Tau don't actually care about the other ones. They're like, well, what matters is that you don't eat us. But it's even not though, well, well, it's maybe they, not that they don't care. It's maybe that they just, they don't... F- like, like, they're like, if the Demiurg don't care if they get eaten, yeah. the Demiurg don't care, then we don't care. Do you think a human would care? Um, like, if you and I are fighting together and, and you die, yeah. like, am I going to want a crude sticking its head inside your innards, or am I going to want to honor you and bury you? I don't know. You That's actually me. a good question. <laughs> like, for the most part, I would yeah, say... You would want to bury me. I want to bury you. Yeah. I want to show you honor. Like, we fought together. But, you died. And I lost. So I'm going to be like, no, you can't eat him. But, so but the Tau aren't going to enforce that. What if uh, you fought with the Demiurg? Yeah. No, no, sorry. You fought with the Crute, and you actually got to know the Crute. Yeah. And then he's like, man, I'm really hungry, though. Can I please just eat him? Like... It helps me, like, but it, it's they just don't wasteful do it. not to. It's also, it's also cultural for them, right? It's yeah, an honorable like, thing to yeah, eat like, the dead. Yeah, they, like, they eat their own dead because it's like they right. absorb the spirit and it's like yes. they will live on forever. But I like, me for me, I'm like, well, no, in my culture, we yeah. don't eat. Yeah, and then I don't think the crew would make any fuss about yeah, that. Yeah, like, like, right. like but, the crew don't try to eat the towel. It'd be but the same I, thing. But, it, but how... Why do they not try to eat it? Do they not do it because they have a respect for the Tao or because they're being psychically altered or pheromoned up saying you are not allowed to do this? I think it's more but how could a, fer- respect. a pheromone though wouldn't even affect other races. Yeah, that's I'm, the weird thing. That's not necessarily true at all. If like, like you can alter what someone's thinking by like, like it can make them more compliant. Okay, my real world example to this is cats. Yeah, cats exude a pheromone that make um, predators in their area view cats as like weak, small, and not a threat. So they they ex- they excrete this pheromone that makes them seem small in their territory, and you're more likely to accept them. Mm. They have found concentrated forms of this in humans that we call crazy cat ladies. These crazy <laughs> cat ladies have mm. like this pheromone inside them, like skyrocketed amounts, mm. which is an almost scientific reason of why they actually have all these cats in their house. Mm. 
that shows you that a cat is able to alter what a human's perception is. Yeah, sure. So is it so difficult but to think that... That's also on the same it, planet, though. Is like, it so difficult to think that these ethereals, which were potentially taken off planet, altered, and brought back, have a thing that could expand all races? Yeah, but... That so, would be insanely powerful, though. But it yeah. doesn't affect everyone. There's a limit. And that's so, why some humans are, are kept under it, because they want to think it's good. I don't there know. There has to I, be that willingness I'd have to, I, to live I under I think, it. like, some humans just, they accept the philosophy, because yeah, it's, like it's, it's actually a completely it, reasonable philosophy. It really it, is, yeah. Or is it because yeah. <laughs> the pheromone twists it in their brain? So. Because all I, you have to do... Yeah, I don't think that's All you have to do is look at like, it. There's I not think that's a conspiracy theory. Yeah, there's not enough ethereals to be everywhere at once to keep every... Every one of these minor Xenos or humanity in check. Yeah, and at besides, all isn't, times. It, isn't it the water cast that actually will go down first and not actually the Ethereals themselves? Yes. I'm sure an Ethereal would be with them, but it's yeah. the water cast doing all the talking. Yeah. 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 But, like, the, like, I'm not saying that it's constantly, you're constantly being bombarded. Like, all it takes is one mind alteration, and now you view things differently. But, like, so why, why, back to the crew and eating Tao? Like, why would they care? Like, why would that be, like, uh, why would the Tau care? Yeah, like... If, why, they, if, if they can control the crew to the extent of the level you're talk, talking about, yeah. like, the Tau... Or the crew would not have, like, any autonomy whatsoever. If they can contain the crew's most basic instinct, right? But they don't. Like, the crew have complete autonomy. Like, so, if it is the crew's most basic instinct, why do they not follow it? If it's their most basic instinct, why do they not eat Tau? Like, because it's respect to me. Like the tower, like just don't eat us. So like, you we think find every that single crew, every single crew has that respect for the tower? Because I could show you humans. I don't think it is respect. I think it's they've come under the philosophy, which I think is a lot. <laughs> so, which changes yeah. every single crew. Yeah. Yes, I think. Why yeah. not? Like philosophy it's just changes. like just don't eat this one thing that you're not you're not going to be fighting that one thing anyways. Like. And so on a battlefield, like if there's Tau and Kroot, yeah, they're fighting something. So just go eat the things that are not a Tau. Like there's no need for the Kroot to eat the Tau in the first place. When there will be other dead things, there'll be their own dead Kroot beside them, and there'll be enemies around. So, them. But there's gonna like that just seems crazy. Like that this there statistical- wouldn't be at least one Kroot somewhere who's oh, gonna. I, well, okay, there's always an exception to a rule. So like, this is what I'm saying. No, I know like, they don't. Kroot don't eat Tau. I'm sure Why? they. I'm sure some have. Like I have yet to find an example. Yeah. All I can see is what GW puts forward, and what they put forward is they do not eat Tau. The Tau forbid it. But yeah. how can you conceivably control an yeah. entire race? Don't, don't, Good philosophy. No, no but that no. never works. No. Don't that eat us. That never like, works. Just say don't eat it us. It doesn't work. There's <laughs> no reason to eat us. Why, are, why do you need okay, to There's no like, reason for you to speed. It only it, contributes yeah, to more gotta, deaths on the road. <laughs> yeah. I can show you scientific fact <laughs> that proves if you speed, there's a higher chance of collision, including fatalities. That is logical. Okay, no, no, People but you, still you're, speed. But you're a human, though. Like, so what? Okay. Every single race that they've ever met has the exact same it's dedication best, to the great it's, good. it's completely f- no it's not it's, it's a fallacy it's just saying a, that every race i think will comply completely yeah. Human, I, humans I honestly like i think out of all the other alien species they're one of the only races that need individuality yeah other Elgar. races maybe but a, a lot well, of other races them, they, they don't need conform it to their past and stuff it could like, be a like the way you're saying it is a very human thing like it's not considering the way that you know like an alien species could be they could not have any need for indiv- the individuality the tau had individuality until the ethereals showed up it oh, doesn't yeah yeah completely the tau are no longer individuality but so why so how did that change in them overnight philosophy no no yes no, no. there has to be a, no I, I agree no. like it could be an organ or a psychic power but for them to there's got to be like a mechanism races, in which like it i think can't, you're underestimating the power of a philosopher king. I think which is not which is Plato's idea of it an ideal can't last civilization for thousands of years bridging thousands of cultures it, but, yeah the it, problem according to Plato it's it could. a statistical impossibility no I've I've read the Republic yeah and like I know I know the arguments that you're talking about but it, it's yeah I guess we only have human examples to look at as like like it, a philosopher king you'd have to have a very totalitarian state in order to actually like you couldn't have like a senate you couldn't have a congress it's like like you can't it's have ty- a, it's a tyrant yeah exactly and you know maybe that tyrant is only benevolent and only yeah, utilitarian which but is what that is impossible because yeah. he murders people 
But it's for it's for the greater good. It's though. not though. But how do they how Yes, they have this philosophy that is for the greater good, but how could they possibly make all the calculations to know for sh- for certain that 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 the ripple effect of what they're having is actually going to That's true. That's a good question. Actually that is the ha- question. Like be uh, the greater good. Like they they're sort of making these crazy calculations these which assumptions. Yeah, like yeah, yeah that that's true. like what they're doing is going to end up like being for the greater good. But they don't like they don't know that and you, you know, I, it seems like if you encounter, it seems like the emperor would not like this idea oh, because no. it, it's kind of a compete competes with him, yeah, right? Yeah, and he, he would do everything he could to. I don't actually know the full history of how well, Tao emperor, and the empire, like they fight all yeah, the time, yeah, right? Because the like empire views it as their divine right, yeah, yeah. to rule the galaxy, yeah. which goes against the greater good, because the greater good says that the empire is, like, the Tao empire is everything, yeah. and you sacrifice for them. So, yeah. humans and Tao, the human as the Imperium stands, could never function with the empire. No, yeah. yeah I agree. L- like, like, literally, like, uh, um, Le- Lenin was, between, like, in, in communist Russia, there's, like, Lenin and Stalin, and Lenin was actually like almost the more ideological one. Like he was, he was actually more of a pure communist, and he was like, and he everything he did was for literally. He said it was for the greater good. It was for like to institute international communism, right? And and to bring everyone out of poverty and into equality. And then and he was still like, uh, he was still a murderous son of a bitch. But he he was at least principled. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, when Stalin came in, hit, who, like, was his successor, Stalin was, like, he he just liked to hurt people. Like, he was, a, like, a masochist. He, like, you see some of the things that he did, and it, it wasn't... It wasn't about uh, no one. You couldn't see the rationale for the greater good behind it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't about the ideology. Yeah, like it just it kind of got crazier and crazier with Stalin, and even like Stalin was obviously killed way more people than Lenin. But that's a problem. Is like you have uh, it just takes one generation of people to like flip this thing into like. A nightmare right from from being yeah no i i agree but and if, we if you're looking at what they have so far it, that hasn't happened right. like it but looks good the reason to me is why hasn't it happened because we do know the tau had individuality we know that when they developed themselves they were different they had different thoughts they competed they fought they squabbled amongst themselves and look why, where that got them but though. why all of a sudden are they now mindless slaves They're that not, do though. anything? But it's, it's they be- do anything and everything the ethereals ever command. It's because their indiv- individuality you- almost wiped them out completely. Yeah, they needed that, and so they see like look look where that got us to an- almost annihilating our entire species, and then look where this has got us, and like we're able to you know. Yeah. But it's so you think you think, it Sh- seems- you think Farsight wants to wipe out the Tau race? No, no, I think... Or do Far- you think his eyes have been open to the truth? I think Farsight is very well-intentioned, but <laughs> I think he's lost sight of the greater He's also wielding a crazy demon blade. It's not a demon blade. <laughs> it's not, but yeah. it's some type of if, crazy... Here's, anything, here, here's it's, the it's, thing, though. Here's, it does, a, it, oh, here's the thing. With the all-encompassing ideology, what happens is, yeah, you have someone who's against it like far, Farsight, and then once he... Once he starts that, it becomes almost like a disease within the exactly. culture. Like yeah. the the disease spreads. So what do you have to do to a, a, cut it a disease? You cut it out, right? Like you have you have to eliminate it and kill it. And it seems like it just seems so inevitable that someone is going to rebel against the greater good, and it's going to cause like a rift within their society. And that event, it, that's not sustainable. That doesn't seem like a sustainable like. So we 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 know it's possible to rebel. Yeah. Like. And yeah. Exactly. The Tao are the ones who accepted the greater good the most. Yeah. Right. They ascribe to it the most. Yeah. How come no other race we hear of has rebelled against the Tao? Right. What what's keeping them in even when the Tao ascribed yeah. to it the most power? It does seem bizarre. What keeps them is ideology, man. Right, but the, like, uh, we already know that it fails because it failed with Farsight. 
yeah, sure. There's always going to be people that rebel that are crazy. But there's no reason to rebel when yeah, life is like, going good. Yeah, absolutely exactly. Is. When you're because getting, what, what you're happens, getting fed all the time, yeah. you're getting everything that you you're need not taking. dying. Like your yeah, family like, is like you can live a normal life. Yeah, you're like oh, without the Tao, we couldn't do it. We didn't have basic health care. Yeah, <laughs> like you know, now they have it. It's like why are they going to start shit? Like there's no reason for them. But well, Where, well there is because. Races are greedy. Everyone wants to survive, but not just no, survive. They want to thrive. No, humanity is greedy. You're, you're no, pr- no, 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 no. False. A hundred percent false. A hundred percent false. Every <laughs> species, if they evolved, they are they. If they, if the process of evolution happened with any other species, they look out for themselves. They, they, it's like. about survival of the fittest. It's about surviving, and it's about looking out for yourself so like you, but i I, so I, I, I agree with mark though that i think the next level of evolution past that would be to work with other things and survive together yeah what's going to be more yes. beneficial to put up a if the crew put up a big fuss and are like no we don't want to work with the tower anymore well no more crew they're dead <laughs> how is that fair what if the crew were no threat like, i'm not saying it's, it's not fair, fair. It's, it's it's how is that good it's you how it but how is it good yeah Greater good. It doesn't. Uh, uh, the greater, your greater good means the great, jack shit. No, to the, the greater, greater good of the galaxy is that everyone works together and everyone. Benefits. So you have, if you have dissenters, the they, good, they kind yeah. of have to be eliminated in yeah. that in that ideology because they they wreck everything else for everybody else. Yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah, like, exactly. Sure, what they're doing want, is not morally good. You, you are cre- but what? the greater good <laughs> of the entire galaxy. As, if as everyone in, works together, everyone fights against the nids. The greater good, you know, as like, described by you. You do not get to determine what is my greater good. I'm not talking about your greater good. Absolutely, you are about because the greater I, good of the galaxy as a whole. You, and if, but that idea. See, if we get into a fist fight right now, <laughs> yeah, that's not good, right? No, but see, but, but it but, would be if it, it helps be you good win. For a co- yeah, because I'm gonna win, and then me and Eric are gonna be right, and our greater good is well, gonna contribute Rio. peace. Or I mean, yeah, me and Rio, and then Jordan's gonna see what I did to you. He's gonna join our side. Is he? <laughs> and then or is Jordan gonna, gonna stand for a, what's right? We're gonna have the not greatest good in this room. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like it has nothing to do with what you think, and every everything to do with what both parties think i can hear and listen to all your things and i think like wow like the tau empire sounds amazing unfortunately (laughs) in my culture like we only ascribe to our own beliefs and while we are a peace-loving race we wish you the best with your galactic dominance we want no part in it dead and and dead how is that good not necessarily the Tao do not ask for people to go to the front lines and die. You could contribute by being like... Doesn't matter. Well, I no, don't no, ascribe no, no, to no, the belief no, no, of the greater good. Out. Just hear me out. Like, so that planet doesn't want to be on the front line. They just want to be left alone. And it's like the Tao like, well, we can help you a little bit. We're not asking anything from you. We'll give you some tech. You can give us some food. That like, is that's them asking. asking. That's but if asking that, for something. Like, but if the society not, is like completely isolationist and they don't, they don't want anything to do with like... They don't even want to contribute like, to a society that condones is, war. The other thing is, there isn't any specific proof that the Tau would absolutely wipe that race out. Other than the Pactruns. Which is that's not confirmed. Not confirmed. Though. Yeah, that's true. And, we, like, the, and I, there could have, even if it was, even if that was true, there could have been a very good reason. Mm, could have. I, but, no, I, I think it is reasonable to have suspicion of the Tau. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. There, like, there is some sketchy things going on. But I think there just is. Just think, but, if everyone works together, everyone's happy. That's the greater good. That's if we, not true. No. Yes, that you is, cannot if we claim all 100%. work together to one common goal. Everyone benefits. How do you not benefit? No, I, I, from I, that. The way I see it, in in okay, this is I'm talking about. That, that's 40K, about, I'm not that's about, about as our, deep as a reality. Katy Perry song. <laughs> like to just say, <laughs> if everyone works together, we'll all be happy. Well, no, like, these are just you would if you boil well, these down. These are just com- com- competing <laughs> ideologies, basically. But in 40k, honestly, like. If if the Tao is able to spread their philosophy to let's say the the Eldar and um, humanity, I don't think would ever accept it. The orcs would never accept it. The Nids couldn't accept <laughs> it. But you know they could unite a bunch of powerful races and they could wipe out a threat like um, yeah they the could Nids. all work together and wipe out the Nids or the orcs or these ones that are just chaos. solely bred yeah for destruction like yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone it's working not a bad, together is a good thing. In 40k, it actually it's not. But a bad it's plan. impossible unless you wipe out dissenting races. Yes. Yeah. Which it's necessary. Is, which is not good. 
the Interrex and the Eldar, I don't think they would view that as a good thing. The Interrex prove, like, the Interrex is a uh, human race that splintered off during the Dark Age of Strife, uh, the Long Nights, where they splintered off and they advanced uh, genetically past humanity and they had, like, crazy weapons and stuff. But they, like, they had races that they accepted into their fold, just like the Tau, but they also were like, oh, they don't ascribe to us and they don't agree with us. We just put them on a planet and we'll leave them be. We'll put warnings in the sky so people don't yeah. go down there. Well, once again, though, there is no proof that the Tau, if somebody wants to be left alone, that they just leave them I'm, alone. I swear I found that line and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. But, if, if you find it, sure. But I don't think that's the case. We, we kind of assume that's the case, but not necessarily it is. Like, Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I don't like... To wipe something out is harsh. Other than the Pock Troons. Yeah. But <laughs> But if you're looking at um, their society where it's built off of this I- whole idea, right? Then it's yeah. just it becomes necessary. Yeah, like you see the galaxy as a whole, and like, you see all the Their conflict. whole idea of morality is completely different from yours, right? Like they see that as ultimately it is moral because it's be- it, it benefits, you know, the galaxy. You know, as a, as a whole, exactly. rather than just a small, you know, one planet. Yeah, which which if you're thinking about it in terms of the whole galaxy is nothing. No, not really. But Searching. again, very utilitarian. Not not necessarily like my philosophy in in the real world, but in 40k, it's <laughs> actually yeah. like it's not a bad it's not a bad ide- ideology to go with. Especially since there is so many huge threats, like you said, like the Nids and the Orcs and Chaos, like. You have to band together in order to defeat these things that are actually... Yes, I agree in the face of existential threats. Yeah. Which there is multiple. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. totally. That it is a unifying force, but you have to have... What happens when those threats are eliminated is my question. It's then, it, it and seems you've like seen how much you accomplish and like wow the grade is good is good <laughs> it, it actually works <laughs> it actually works <laughs> but but would people that's the question though is they would people just be like left alone now and left to their own life and devices and culture yeah why not know. like it kind of seems like yeah that. like all these uh, cultures that they have they they still are allowed to do what they're allowed to do but they have to be part of the greater good and yeah you ha- still have it's, to, it's have necessary to ascribe though. to its beliefs because it's, it's necessary the only belief to describe or ascribe to is the greater good and that is just to work together but what what if <laughs> what is so wrong about working together <laughs> what part of working together do you not like okay so here's here would be my argument for this yeah. is i'm going to go back to the peaceful race <laughs> that has no part in war yeah. and they don't even want to support a race that ascribes to violence. And sure. it would be supporting the like Tau. Like a pacifist race. Right. They're, they're not only are they a pacifist, but they are active pacifists. Like, sure. if, if giving you food would help your fire warriors commit war, we refuse. And if giving your earth cast food would help them potentially build items of war, we refuse. And then the Talos think, okay, well, they're not a threat to anything. They're not hurting nobody. We'll leave them alone. Mm, like, we assume that. but Well, we... It can't be said one way or the other, but it's I'm like... I'm trying to find it. <laughs> yeah. Games Workshop will need to flesh this out a little bit. <laughs> it just seems like such a, like... It, like, it's so hard for that idea to even work with humans, much less intergalactic species. Like, you, got, you guys are assuming that it would be easier. I, I think the variables would be, like, exponentially more when you're dealing with intergalactic species. Yeah. So it seems like even like harder for me to conceptualize that people would actually work together in that in that kind of way for that or they just realize the the how big the galaxy is and how dangerous it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Like cuz a lot of these races that come under the Tau Empire are just minor races. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, they they and, do it cuz they see it like it's the best option for them in the moment, yeah. right? But, but yeah. I don't know. Okay, well, I think we could ramble about this for hours, really. <laughs> I think we've all kind of made our points. I, I plan on finding that plan it, quote. Plan but... on finding it, write it down, we'll uh, bring it up next episode. Yeah. <laughs> but as of right now, the greater good is the best. All right, see you later. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is worth examining. Yeah. And, and following. It, it, <laughs> but it's, it's potentially, it, it's interesting to think that maybe um, 
the Tao's greatest weapon isn't actually their technology, but it's maybe their philosophy. Right. Yeah. Or their psychic presence or their <laughs> pheromonal ability to sure. make you brain dead. I, sure. I truly hey, you're like, all happy and no crutes brain dead. They're all still doing what they want to do. Even except though, for eating Tao. You know what, that, though? Even the fine. crew, like, they limit what they want. That. Yeah, like, even they limit, like, they don't eat nids because they know that's not going to be a good thing. Right, but how... They're, they're not going to eat Tau because then maybe the Tau will get pissed off at them. Like, it's not going to be a good thing. They have plenty of other things to eat out there. The world's a big place. I'm just, I'm just saying... <laughs> full of delicious things. I am just eat. saying <laughs> that I think it's an impossibility to really... To control this many people without some other way I, I truly think it's an impossibility it, and yeah, the, it to seems, me yeah, the success, it kind of, the success fast, yeah. of it yeah. has to be due to something no, I, lurking I, behind I do agree with you I, I think even though if they are using methods to manipulate I don't think like the idea yeah, you, the, you the, think the, the means, means justifies the yeah. ends yeah, yeah. So because it would it, would, it still good. would fall <laughs> under yeah you, you, utilitarianism so yeah, yeah. I um, so have you ever heard of Mengele Mengele. He was a German doctor during World War II. Oh, yes, yes. The the Mengele, like the angel of death. Yeah, he did a bunch of the experiments on twins. Yeah. Uh, Everything he did, he claimed it was for the greater good. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Did he actually accomplish anything? Oh, his tech, his like medical advancements were crazy. But it caused the suffering. He was probably one of the most evil people ever. Perfect. I I would say, yeah. So, (laughs) So evil is sometimes necessary? Yes. Wow, that doesn't really that would I, not ascribe i have to go to my job every freaking day <laughs> and commit heinous acts mark it's called then, working then i get to go home and i get to enjoy my life without it i couldn't do that i have to commit yeah. this evil I, every day i also believe that like the regular like the regular planets like the habited worlds like they're not told that they're not told like we annihilated um, this many planets because they refuse to come into the great. No, no, they they're more. They would be like, yeah. um, like tragically, this race did not accept our <laughs> our benevolent gift of the greater good, and all the people who have been indoctrinated would be like, that's so sad, Aww. right? And they like, would be correct to think so, right? But that's where like your propaganda comes yeah, in. Like, it's yeah. not real, and no one does propaganda like the human race. Let me tell you, <laughs> like we. We're really good at that yeah. and lying to people. But I, I just don't think the greater good is as good right. as they think. You're right. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I just, oh, I want to believe. <laughs> no, you, you don't. Know? Otherwise, you would. <laughs> no, because I see too many flaws. You're too human, Eric. <laughs> too human. <laughs> I just wish I could be like one of those yeah. mindless Gevesa. <laughs> Those are humans too. I know that's what I mean. Mindless, <laughs> not mindless. unable to think for themselves. They're like the Imperium Here, abandoned us to get killed by these freaking Tau. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna join the Tau because they actually care about us and they're gonna it's, actually fight to for me, us. To me, it's also it's the same thing as like the Imperial Guardsmen that fall to chaos because they had no choice, right? Mm. It's like either die under chaos or join chaos. Like yeah, that's the same but, thing but to me. The the difference is chaos is just trying to wreck stuff where the Tau is are. It? Yes. Or are they just trying to spread their belief of wrecking stuff? <laughs> and what the greater good? Just destroying planets and and they're people? not. They're they're, they're trying no? to colonize they the galaxy. And... They don't destroy people. Okay, let's end this. <laughs> let's end this. Um, because we could talk about this forever, and yeah. we're not getting anywhere. I no. don't think it's going to be good anymore. Uh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> just uh, kind of reiteration. Go check our Facebook page out. Uh, it's just search Lorehammer. Send us an email, lorehammerpodcast at um, gmail.com. I'm on Twitter as well. Every once in a while, I like stuff. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'll tweet something as well. Do you ever well. dislike anything on Twitter? Do I ever dis... You can't dislike stuff. You can't stuff. dislike it. No. Okay. You can't I give, don't know. I, I'm I guess not I could. I could with guy. my words. <laughs> <laughs> my words could dislike things. Uh, but if, if you want information on our contest on uh, creating an image for us, send us a message. Mark is more than willing to uh, buzz you at 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> And wake me up. Just turn your phone on silent when you go to it bed. It is on silent. <laughs> How does it buzz then? Because it vibrates. Silent means vibrate. No, no, turn it on like... You can uh, turn the vibrate off. Yeah, too. like if you slide Well, your maybe fo- if I was a technologically no, like advanced if you slide for the greater your phone good, up, you <laughs> press this button it. and it's like, do not disturb is now on. Well, I don't know what that means. I just... Uh, anyways, send us a message on Facebook. Um, other than that, thanks for listening. We're, I think we're sitting at like 1,200 downloads now. So really? It's kind of cool. 
And yeah. it's kind of nice to know that some people like to listen to us. Yeah. All the rest of you guys. After this know. episode, there's just going to be a lot of haters. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> after listening to, to us rant for 45 minutes about the greater good. <laughs> it doesn't exist! <laughs> Anyways, I know it does for someone like you, Mark. That's fine. And Rio. I need something to believe in. <laughs> Other than the grim darkness. Other than grim darkness. Um, well, I guess signing off. See you guys later. All right, see ya. Peace out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>